Yeah. They're recording. They had me for commercial. We are recording, so you want to turn on them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hopefully someone can even go out and make it there. All right, let's start the meeting. Welcome to the uh, board of, uh, Litchfield's Board of Selectmen's meeting for April 14th, 2014. Let's rise for a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, first, just an apology if you're you're probably watching some recording. We weren't able to go live immediately. Hopefully, we will be able in the next 15 minutes or so. Um, <clears throat> the board is just coming out of paperwork and manifest review. Uh, let's see. First up is the review of items for consent. And the uh, items for consent folder today is the minutes for uh, March 24th, uh, 2014. The accounts payable manifest for $46,237.21. A payroll manifest for $45,037.76. The reappointment of John Regan to the Zoning Board of Adjustments. The reappointment of Roger St. Lant Jr. to the commission, uh, Conservation Commission. The reappointment of Sharon Jones to the Conservation Commission. The reappointment of Michael Croto as alternate member to the Conservation Commission. An elderly exception application denial. An elderly exception application approval times three a veteran's tax credit ap application approval, the reappointment of, uh, of a part-time police officer, or reappointment of part-time police officers, the reappointment of Tim Kearns to the Cable Committee, the reappointment of Russ Blanchett to the Cable Committee, the reappointment of Cynthia Couture, uh, Couture to the Cable Committee, the reappointment of Brian Millette to the Cable Committee, and the reappointment of Dick Pethany to the Cable Committee. Do I have any motions or? Mr. Chairman, I'll move we accept the uh, items for consent. I'll approve. Mo Sorry. Yep. <coughs> uh, motion to approve the consent, seconded by Mr. Bork. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5 0 0. So, Jason, probably best to do a little bit of a jockey of schedule. The cable committee was was uh, was going to be here to talk about their budget. They're not. They're running. They're stuck in traffic. So if it's okay, we can bring Mr. Pinciero up and start talking about the highway, and then we'll go on the cable after he's done. Yeah. Do you want to check on if we have any other business? Yeah. I will. <clears throat> Thank you. And there is any? Is there any other business? So worry about the schedule. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anybody else have anything else for the for the business tonight? They want to add to the agenda. All right, hearing none, there's nothing else being added to the agenda. And uh, Jack? Sorry. We're going to push you up on the schedule, my friend. Sorry. Right. We'll get you out of here earlier. That's why I come a little early. <laughs> Sometimes there's a little room. We'll go. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Good evening Mr. Pence here. How are you all? Thank you. Well, thank you. I guess we're just here to discuss where we spent the money, or going to spend the money. Do you want me to run through the list? Yeah, you can. Yeah. Um, so what um, what we put together uh, is a summary of the uh, road improvements from the operating budget and the warrant article. Uh, I say Jack's been working pretty hard to try to maximize the value from the available funds across different repairs and roads. Uh, the chart that I've shown you um, on the uh, site shows the uh, plan for work. Um, the <coughs> so I, mean, I can walk. I will walk through uh, what those are. Uh, the total uh, that we project being available is about three hundred fifty-five thousand five hundred dollars. Now, what that that is coming out of three separate buckets that are there. There is the 170500 block grant that is approved within the highway budget. There is the 170000 that was approved as a separate warrant article. And then there is 25000 
in the operating budget allocated generally for pavement maintenance. That, um, so what we did is to put all of it in one bucket at this point to try to uh, make more sense rather than say this little project's coming out of this, this little project's coming out of that. So we knew about Mike Lane, um, and that was the project that we had stated was within the operating budget. Uh, bids there are $158,411. Uh, doing the southern end of Stark Lane uh, would be about $50,000. Uh, reclaim on Robin Avenue, about $26,000. Uh, repair and overlay for McElwain Drive, about $22,000. Uh, shim on a portion of Nesson Keg for about $12,000. Patching on Page for about $19,500. Um, there are uh, patching two areas of Albuquerque um, in the areas of Pinecrest and Century, about $3,250. An overlay on Masqua Drive, $36,450. And uh, within the past two weeks, uh, we had emergency on Woodburn that we needed to put $5,000 in for emergency patch there after repairing a pi uh, pipe. So what you'll see right now is an anticipation of about $334,000. Uh, so there's about 21,000 uncommitted. Now that uncommitted goes several ways. One is the surprises. We didn't know that we were going to have an issue on Woodburn that we had to cover. Um, two, uh, if we hit anything unexpected in the larger projects, we have some contingency built in, but if you know, you know, uh, if there is a problem, uh, we'll have that available. And hopefully on the back end, if everything goes the other way and things all work to our advantage, that 21,000 becomes a little bit more and perhaps we have the ability to pick off another one of the roads that is in the um, overlay area on that, on the road scores that we have so we can pick it off before it needs to become a full a full reclaim project yes. or in, in, in case the state's multiplier drops <laughs> right oh, that's the other possibility right i mean so the, so you, you know so we didn't want to commit all of it right now but wanted to show this is the plan i think jack has been going back and forth over this to try to stretch those dollars as far as possible and work through as many things on that plan as we could do we um, do we know when these projects will start jack it went to bid today, okay. so the bid is already in. We know that Connor will be doing it. They were the only bidder of three. Uh, and did you bid all the projects, Jack, or just? Uh, we bid them all. We have a we have a sheet that we use for bidding, right? And we I put see. everything out with, with selective bidding. We didn't bother going through a bunch of. Nobody ever uh, bids anyway against yep. Connor and their own town usually but so, we, we did solicit from Brock and a, a few others so it's really up to Rick on the time frame we have some preparation to do <coughs> on uh, McFallon going into the school uh, we're going to do some uh, thermal heating on some of the pipe crossings to get those back together. We have some concrete around some of the catch basins has to be removed. Uh, Mike so Lane, it looks like, is what is that a complete reconstruct? That's a complete drainage and all. Yeah. Okay. We, we're gonna remove some uh, asphalt swales that were put in. Oh yeah. That's creating some real serious problems at the far end. Yeah. Uh, the, houses, the house at the very end of the cul-de-sac on the left has been continuously getting flooded. And it's because of the drainage is either the outfall is plugged, we try to dig it, it didn't do any good. It's the drainage itself from the swale, pushes everything down into that cul-de-sac. And yeah. there's nothing there to really to handle it. So we're gonna completely redo that whole road. That should start pretty shortly, I would imagine. That was awarded to American a month and a half ago, two months? Yeah, about a month, month yeah, and a half ago. Dick, can you guys go live? I'm recording, but I'm not live. Someone's got to reach me up go live. I can't remember how to do that. Sorry, Jack. No, yeah. that's all right. Fine. Uh, Ness and Keg, you see that one. Ness and Keg is uh, after uh, 
a couple of different options that we looked at. Uh, I asked Rick if he'd come over and take a look at it with me, and uh, we both decided that the road has to come up, has to be raised. So by shimming it and overlaying now, which is a minimal cost, at least we'll have material when we do do it to build the road up. So it's not like we're throwing that money away. We'll be utilizing that material, material yeah. later. So uh, I think it's a good plan. I hope you guys feel that way too. It's a lot of work. Uh, it certainly is a lot of work. You come out, you com you're coming off of a tough winter. Now you're going into a real tight mm -hmm. summer zone. Yeah. But I, it looks good to us. I mean, we both looked at it. Uh, I think it's a great plan. Might be, it may be a little less, or it may even be a little more, but hopefully it'll come in a little less than where it is. Then if we do, in the fall, after a conversation with Jason, that we could possibly do one more road. I have a bunch of them that we've looked at. One that's in the price range is Nathan Drive, which is off of Pine Crest. Off of Pine Crest, yeah. And we had a cave in there on... Uh, Pine crest that we repaired ourselves. I spent a day underground over there. It washed right out okay. completely. I have two questions. Sure. Shoot. First question. Mask wash? Yep. Ma mask wall? Yep. What's the linear footage that you're doing there? Oh, God. The whole thing? Yeah, the whole thing. <laughs> 3,645 feet. <laughs> That's good. That's, uh, Price that's, is right. that's over 7,000 feet of roadway yeah. that we're going to get done. And if there's money left over, I couldn't, I couldn't stress enough how much I would like to see the north section of Albuquerque fixed behind April. From April north or April? That, that section that's about 50 to 100 feet that's just dreadful in the winter with the frost heaves. It's it's just to the uh, south of April. South Drive, of April. Yeah. yeah. Oh, between Bristol and. But right. that's April. frosties. I mean. Uh, yeah, you can. There's really not much you can do about it. You're gonna get it, even if we tear that up. Unless we went it. to a full depth yeah. or re, you know reclaim, you're not gonna do anything there. It's not gonna throw money away. Well, then we need to put that on the priority list for the very near future, in my mind. Then. I think. This plan was because we have done a lot of work on Albuquerque. We have spent a great deal of money there. I know. It's and a very I, it's big time. These roads that, that are section. proposed now are really, really bad. Oh, and I get that. You know, up there we get a frosty. Yeah, but uh, I, I think you could well spend your money in other places at this point. Albuquerque has got to be done up there anyway from century up eventually yeah. so when you do do that then you'd have to go to a you know a full reclaim where is that section on your plan on the, on the five-year plan i don't i haven't fit in it anywhere yet yeah. you know i mean it, there's a lot of parts of albuquerque that are bad if you go from meadowbrook down to page road i mean to pinecrest that's breaking up like crazy yeah but it's not some minor repairs it's there, the but. camera it's not that bad. No, not that bad. No, but go by there now. It's fine. It's not bad now. I went over it today a couple of times. When I'd I went say to it's Conor. worse than what you just said down here. Oh no! Oh yeah! No way! Oh yeah! I, I would. think the frosty the frost heave is gone. The road's not breaking up. It's yes, just it a is. frost heave. It's no, all that's cracked. Up it's still towards rough. Century. It's up near Century, isn't it? You're talking about? It's past Century. Between Century and April. It's actually between Bristol and April. Bristol, Bristol and April. I'll, well, I'll let's, look let's, at that let's go take a little look at it, Jack. And, yeah, and then, I, I don't know. I know because I know Steve has brought it up a couple of times. might be right. You might, yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any problem if we I get this, spend the, the money there. And I, and I know it is, but I think that that section is worse than that section right now. It's kind of a toss up, I think. That's just my opinion. I'll look at them. So. I'm not going to tell you how to do your job. No, I, I never. And have. I appreciate that. I only say, maybe if there's enough and it could be done. If not, <laughs> let's get it in the plan sooner yeah. than maybe later. Yeah. I'm just looking at trying to get some of the side feeder streets, you know, the feeder roads well, and no, some I of think, the smaller ones. I think this is great. You got over 7,000 feet of roadway. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. 
it, that's more than we've ever done at one time. Yep. We have a lot of reclaims. We have a lot of overlay. We, we, it's really spread out pretty well. And I'm glad you explained the shim on Nesson Keg because I am not a big fan of shims. Neither am I, but I, it saves the road to 16 when it's in the schedule. Yep. And, and that's got a drainage issue, so we're going to yep. spend a lot of money down there. You know. but. Any other questions for Jack? I have a question comments? for Jason. Sure. Jason's right there. Right. Go ahead. The um, highway block grant money comes in in four distinct payments, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly, and you need three three hundred thirty-four thousand four hundred roughly. Yep. When does the amount of money in our kitty, if I will, uh, equal the three thirty-four? Is it not till later in the year? Uh, it's not till later in the year because it comes in. It it comes in quarterly. Right. Right. So it will be. You know, the last quarterly payment is probably. Uh, it, it probably is a December payment. But we do have enough money to float the whole project, so yeah. we don't have to wait for it. Yeah. And so we are, have, we, are we floating it on what? Uh, we have we have in the approved budget $170,500 because we have to gross appropriate it. So that was our best estimate of that. So if the state over or under performs, that comes out in the wash when we put actuals in in September to set the tax rate. Well, we have three hundred forty thousand dollars. Right, right, but right. So the the community has committed to the hundred seventy thousand five hundred that is in the in the uh, in the appropriated budget. So understood. Some of that, some of the money in the budget, about half of it, uh, is a result of revenues. And if the revenues don't come in, mm -hmm. my point is, are we going to have enough money to be able to do this on a timely basis during the course of the year? From a cash flow point of view, yes. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether you were, yeah. yeah. Um, from, and, you know, you, you've set me up perfectly of this is why we carry a bit of fund balance in order to support these right. issues but between now and the tax. We both agree that it was too much fund balance. <laughs> 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 Here we go again. <laughs> Touche. Yeah. Do we need a motion to approve or is this? No, I think this, this was just, the, the, we, we've already kind of went through the, the budget cycle, the, the plan. Perfect. I think this is just Jack giving us an update. And Jack, as I said earlier, you know, first off, thanks for all the hard work in your staff for the winter. It was a tough winter. And I commend you for taking on this much more work come this summer. So I know it'll get done. Oh yeah, it'll be done. You'll do it, you'll do it like you always do. You're coming under budget. I'll do my best. <laughs> you always do. Tired of sitting nice there crying about it. Good the, job, Jack. Nice job. And the sweeping and all that stuff that we're getting. But well, that's just, miss the hill. We'll get through that stuff too. Oh no, we're all set. It's all taken care of. Good. I do have one question, and that question is: um, Stark Lane was, I believe, built because there were government subsidized housing there. Did the town ever accept that? Accept the road? Um, and I know it's a. Uh, water under the dam? I have no reason to think we haven't accepted it. Um, I would have to go back and research. I mean, we, we plow it, we maintain it, we take care of it. Um, if you're truly interested, well, I'm just I can go back and research. I can hang the bill on the, uh, uh, the feds. The feds. <laughs> hey, we, we will not, I will not live long enough to see that bill paid. Yeah, yeah. A while ago, we did look at some of the, the roads that weren't accepted yet and the only ones that were found was the ones off page road which is pond view and those and they paved that and we accepted it yeah frank if if i remember right um the road itself stark lane i believe was accepted as part of the roy development i believe it was just the structures that were part of the subsidized because that was like 1977 i think 78 yeah i wasn't even born at that time you so. are so oh my god is he dreaming <laughs> i believe it's just the structures i i thought that the roads were accepted as a package i, I don't as part I, of the development yeah i don't really know i was just wondering off the top of my head yeah. on the, uh, we'll if it's a it. government project i mean I think those. I was I was like eight years old myself. And, but, the, and the government still owns it. 
It were built I have a good by, memory. It were by, built by Roy, and it was built with the understanding that they would be, you know, low income housing, basically. Right. Or government subsidized. And, and that's, the only, that's the reason right. he put the, the houses in there. Eh? Right. They I were, think. And some of them are duplexes, which yeah. was uncommon in those years for to yeah. be able to build that. Yeah. It's, we'll check on that, though, Frank. I would want your mind at ease. Don't, don't worry. I'm not, I'm not losing, I'm not losing no sleep about it because I seriously doubt, even if we could show, that yeah. we'd get anywhere. Oh, boy. All right. If there's nothing else for Jack, we'll let him... Uh, did we, we, had a we, we, we do. Oh. Before you send him off, can do you mind if we do the second topic that um, we had flagged for uh, his participation as well? Uh, Stark Lane was accepted in 1984, uh, 3,022 linear feet. There you go. The wonders of computers. <laughs> <laughs> Well, am I miss what's the second? Okay, uh, we, we were going to talk about the um, Route 102. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. a little bit because yeah. uh, the, because you know that's something else that we've both been kind of thinking about on and off over the past uh, couple months before all of this. Um, you, know, you know, an article passed at town meeting giving the direction. The specific language was to see if the town will direct the board of selectmen to bring to the 2015 annual meeting an article to study alternatives and potential costs for a controlled intersection allowing access to Route 102. So, um, you know, this is probably a good time for us to at least kick around how we might want to approach this. A um, couple pieces so you know that what we've been doing here. Um, you know, I had a preliminary conversation with NRPC pre-town meeting um, and said, let's wait and see where we end up with a vote on it. Uh, there are some things that they made that they can do with supporting traffic counts, looking <coughs> at modeling and the like. Um, and then uh, at the uh, narrowest, the very least this article tells us to do is to bring back an article that formally studies the intersection. My sense is we may be able to narrow that scope. Formally a studies bit. or bring back recommendations to now it says an article to study alternatives and costs. So, the the you know the narrow the the, the smallest thing you could bring back is an article that says we need twenty five thousand dollars to study this. My sense is that that isn't necessarily the most productive thing to do on this. So those those things that we can chip away at where we have resources, you know, we through NRPC to actually narrow that scope a little bit. And I know. Jack's been contemplating as well um, various alternatives for road routing. All right. Uh, you know. We'd like, it, we'd like to go out. Albuquerque now is planned to go across Cutler twice. We'd come out by the well, go in, come out by the 55 and over, go in and down to 3A. The commercial end of it today is kind of out of the picture. That was what it was for. It was mm -hmm. originally it was to open at the commercial uh, buildings. But if we were to go straight across Cutler, where we would come out, of, I think it's Duchamp as well, and go straight across Cutler right out to 102, now it would probably mean he'd have to acquire some land to get around the little bit of wetlands that's out there. There's only one, the, what is it, the easterly side that's pretty wet, but not saturating wet. It's dry in the summer. They're vernal pools. So to come out on 102, somewhere between the dentist and Bimisters. Remember that house that we burnt years ago and it rekindled? Mm -hmm. Right in there somewhere. And I think that property is owned by a state. If I, I, I think remember. it was too because they were putting through the circumferential I highway. Say, right? that property owned by the that, state? That's further down, the circumferential. No, but for some the reason they bought, I, they bought the no, state. No, they bought that, the, Frank, the state because did buy that. I don't know, but the circumferential, my understanding, was supposed to go it, down right. where the, there used to be a motorcycle shop there. Down by the other side of Tabernacle. Yes. Right. No, I agree. 
they did buy that house because we had to deal with them in order to burn it. To burn it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'll take your word. I remember you talking about it. That right. was the only reason that I brought yeah. that up. Now, the intersection uh, thing that we're talking about that was um, the subject of the article is where? Cutler and 102, right? No, no, no the, the, the article specifically does not refer to an intersection. If you remember, we got stuck in the, 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 the obvious place where we put, put it in Hudson. where the I was going to say, because... But we can't do it. We've not we, been able to manipulate anything there at all. Because 102 and Page is in Hudson. Right. right. Mm -hmm. So the question so. is, do we... Within Litchfield's borders, can we? So if you have to pay for a light, which is what you're really going to end up doing, more than likely, maybe well, that's not. That's maybe if they let us put a light there. Anyway, the right? line of sight there, you know, in that area we're talking about, is really good. One, you don't have all that congestion of all those parking lots and you know other other roads coming out. Uh, Cutler or Page? No, no, Page. So if you if you move it down. Three, two or three uh, thousand feet, you get a great shot to get in and out. And you're a further distance from the West Road light. Right. So you get more of an opportunity to get out. You don't have that, the guy that pulls it out of the old White Hand building and makes a right and doesn't put his directional on, you sit there and then he turns right. And yeah. that happens all the time. And it's, you know, people are complaining all the time oh, about that right. intersection. We've had one fatality already there, so it's it's time to really look at coming out somewhere else safely. So, mm -hmm. so based on the enabling article that it passed, what's our road? I mean, what's our path forward? Do do we ask Jack to come up with different plans and present it back to us, and, so we can kind of formulate a next kind of next step? Do we? Can I suggest that what Jack could do is take a piece of paper, and route out some ideas. Yeah, he's I mean, just right on a piece of paper. Bring it back, and then bring, and then the board can comment on it. Mm. And then I would suggest what we do would be to see what we could get for a rough estimate for what's the cost to engineer this type of thing, or what are the, or the various well, the, the acquisition. Yeah. Well, that those two are pretty simple. I mean, uh, I talked to our engineer, the engineer today from North Point, and you know, he was willing to. Yeah do pretty much anything that we needed to get done. He's good about aerial maps, so an aerial map was some type of, you know, depending on where the properties are that we have, we must own some of that in there, I'm sure. There's cons uh, conservation. As you say, you got wetlands in there too, right? Yeah, there's some vermin. Got a lot of wetlands pools. in there. So you're gonna have to either get around them, put a, you know, put a culvert in, whatever. <clears throat> yeah. Something's going to have to happen, but it's an ideal spot to come out by Duchamp's well, make Cutler Road at Page a dead end, and you'll get less people out on that S turn when you get out on 102 on Cutler. You'll have people going, even coming back maybe to Albuquerque to, to get out on 102. So it, it's a great project. It would be a huge project. Be, yeah. It'd be huge. Yeah. Should break it up into sections. Yeah, I, I think it's the smartest move we could make. Why well, would we want to move it all the way down to three A? Well, it potentially gives it potentially gives Albuquerque what it's always been designed to do, right? Be an end down the road. So it's definitely you, a good. The path. land is isn't yeah. the land still there to determine us of Albuquerque to come around? Yeah, yeah, we own that already. And then Industrial Drive was going to come off that and go right down to 3A near Eddie's Garage. No, yeah, it was going to come out on at Dushan's, go across right. Cutler, goes into the woods and comes around and comes out at the 55 and over. Yep. Goes back into the other side of Cutler, goes down by the old pit, and then turns left and comes out by the Christmas tree place, somewhere in that area or, or down beyond that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Right, right about where it was supposed to come right next to the circumferential. Right, where exactly. Where supposed yeah. to cut through. Well, where that turnoff is, where the Jersey barrier is, that's where the circumferential is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Just beyond that greenhouse. But I can do that. I yeah, I think, yeah. So something couple, together and we can look at it. we're going to own all that land, though, that would need. Oh, we don't. We'll we have to find out. Yeah, so a couple weeks. Why or something. In a couple weeks, put some stuff to paper and... Kind of what you uh, think that's going to be an aerial today. map from uh, okay. Google Earth, and we'll take a look and see where we can go. Right. Okay. 
Great. Right? It'd be some Technology. big money to get that project done, I can tell you that. Well, it's going to take a lot of money? Yeah. yeah. It's going to take a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. So cut off some of the lumber that we're going to take to build the road and sell that and get conservation to weed out their forest. I don't think we're going to get millions from uh, lumber. No, I don't think and it's we certainly need it for other things, too. I, I doubt very much if it... Well, I think the idea, the thing is, we're bringing we're, we're bringing forward a plan, you know, a concept of how to get there, and then that's going to have some estimates. The people are going to be the end the end yeah. deciders. So, yeah. you could hold off on the light if you could just get the road out there, mm -hmm. and then a few years later put a light in, because you'll be able to see both ways quite a ways. Well, I think the light also is going to still be a state challenge, right? Because they have to approve the light on one hundred two. Well, it has to be approved by the state, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, I wouldn't even think our even exiting on 102 would have to be approved by the state, too. But they won't pay for it because we've had that fight already. Yeah, I know. For years. Mm -hmm. that but again, you know, the, the, this is an evolution in a couple fronts. I mean, first thing is, you know, your charge is to bring forward a plan, a plan to do the study. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can narrow the choices, which I think is more productive, but I don't, I don't think you're going to be at the point or really should be at the point to say, here's, here's our one doing. plan. Yeah, you insulted um, me the other day when you said I wouldn't be in my lifetime. <laughs> we'll circle, I also we'll said it wouldn't be in my lifetime. <laughs> but we really need to do it. All right. Anyway. Thank, All right, thanks, Jack, Jack, thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome. So thank paper, you we'll, do a paper, we'll do a paper plan and go from there. All righty. Concepts and ideas. And again, Jack, thank you for all the work. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. All right. Um, for the folks that joined us live on TV, we apologize for the delay. Um, if you missed the first 15 minutes, it was it is available on download for review afterwards. We had a little bit of a hiccup on kind of trying to go live, but we should be live now. All right, back to our regular schedule. Um, cable budget. Mr. Pinthony. Did the all get a copy? Yes. All right. So, who wants to drive? And so, we're going to review. Yeah, I, I just do, just for a couple piece of background for reminding everybody here and whoever and everybody else who's watching, um, we set up a special revenue fund two years ago. I think it'd be good, right? Um, yep. for uh, cable revenue. So cable franchise fees all go separately into the special revenue or um, fund uh, that pay the cost of it so it no longer goes through our operating budget. <coughs> so which is why you're not seeing it in our normal budget cycle. It's also not subject to the annual budget approval, approved budget, default budget, all that kind of lives in its own world, cycling through the money we get from the franchise fee. Um, and I think we, if you remember when we did this a few years ago too, we lowered the franchise fee, which at the time was you know set to cover annual costs plus sort of a capital replacement plan. So each year, you may not spend everything that comes oh, in yeah. from the it's franchise right. because there are bigger ticket items further out on the schedule. Right. And the theory is that it will, that those funds will be there set at that base level each year. So I think with that, um, if you want to walk through what you've updated, um, because <coughs> they're your numbers more than they're my numbers, so. Right. right. Um, the only items that we uh, modified from the last budgets were, uh, the first one was PEG contracted <clears throat> services. That's a, it's an, a rough estimate to try to cover the additional meetings that the Board of Selectmen has mandated uh, for May 1st to cover the rest of the committee meetings. Yeah, um, we, what did we spend this past year? Uh, what those additional means, what did we spend this year? I don't have that number. Uh, hold on a second. So I don't think we're in the, in the budget schedule anymore, so I don't see what we're. It still should be in the expense report, right? Mm, uh, no, because it ends up being, because everything's moved off to fund five, and we print fund one. We don't print all of the activity outside of that. So <coughs> well, we probably should start seeing fund five too. Then. 
that's what the fund that's being drawn on. We can run all of the other reports, <clears throat> but it, we, run, we run fund one because that's the fund that most people pay yeah. attention to. But everything beyond that, the detail funds, all the others, um, aren't usually part of that okay. route. But we, we obviously can run them. Peg operators, we spent uh, about we spent twenty eight hundred last year. Okay. So if we spent twenty eight hundred dollars, why are we increasing it by two thousand? Oh, there we go. So we don't have to do that. Oh, well, why would we maintain? Why would we maintain it six? Yeah. Well, I would agree. I mean, the other thing I would say is that at twenty eight hundred dollars, let's assume we're doubling the meetings. That's six thousand dollars. So if we do three thousand dollars, is what it was. Well, let's ask the rationale of. How often are the meetings covered? They're all supposed to be covered. But what's supposed to be and what happens can be totally different animals here. There was a oh, motion yeah. made by the board two years ago, a year yeah. and a half ago, yeah. that we would cover all meetings effective this year. Right. Yeah. So, the, so the, yeah. May. So effective May. Yeah, and, and, all, and all the committees were re notified that May 1st effectively that they are to be broadcast. Right. Do you have enough personnel to? staff those meetings I, I think we do I mean if, if we if we start hitting walls then we'll look for more people but we have a pretty good crew at this point okay yeah and we haven't had I think we've only throughout the year we have probably only had one meeting maybe two meetings with that we've missed but it's really usually because we did an ad hoc meeting we forgot to tell somebody well it's not that generally these are the school board that get missed it's the others right well the others I think the other problem is they're not being recorded still right. and we should see zoning board go online conservation should be going online uh, rec should be going online. Those are really the three that were missing throughout the year. So, and I have, you know, obviously I haven't seen any, any feedback about it. So we'll, we'll find we'll find out on the first. There should also be just um, any subcommittees that are formed. For example, sure. um, if there is a committee that uh, for capital. Yep, that will be included too. Yeah. The benefit, well, the benefit of that one, I can turn the cameras on, but. Yes, I agree. So I don't. I guess you know if you only spent twenty eight hundred dollars, say three thousand dollars last year for all the meetings that we had, and we're doubling the meetings. To me, six thousand dollars still seems reasonable. Let, let me just remind everybody of one thing here, um, for what it's worth, and because we, we have to use a slightly different analysis here, in that uh, part of the approval, when you pick a number, you know, is that what you're basically authorizing is the expense up to that number. When you, when you reduce a number, <coughs> there's no money that goes back to the taxpayer directly from this. So we're not juggling to offset. This is, so what happens this to, is a closed system. So what happens to the $50,000 that sits in that account that's not expended? If, if there is money not spent in that account, it goes forward to the capital plan. If it is deemed at some point with the review of the capital plan that you have sufficient funds to fund current operations and the future capital needs, the action, the future action is a reduction of the franchise fee because you don't need to pump as much money into the system. And there's a certain interval in the contract. Um, you can't just do that willy nilly. I think there's a certain. I think it's every year. I think it's every year or every. I remember, I think, I remember asking the question. Right. right. So, you know, j just in terms of, th you know, the line item thinking versus everything else, you're really authorizing it up to, and we can't give the money directly back to the taxpayer. But I don't see that what John was proposing is wrong, because what we're saying is, is he feels, and I would agree with him, that we could spend up to 6000 Right. We should allow to spend up to $6,000 on that line. What happens to the remaining money is set by the award. Out of right. Board. And the board still has a approval over the budget, even if it's in that special fund. So if right. all we're authorizing, you know, Dick and his staff to spend is $6,000 for labor, that's all he's going to get. Right. At least that's all he should be able to Right, right. I, <laughs> I would think, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I just was, was wanted to remind, because it says oh. it's a little different than our normal review. I mean, I, I could go back and say that the bottom line of that budget is reduced by $5,600. So he is going down. I'm just, once again, you know, if we're not spending the money, why put it in the line? Mm -hmm. Do we have information on the other line items, Jason? So uh, rather than just go over the the, the changes, do we have uh, just so we can go through each line item of of where you were where you were last year? Sure. Yeah. So telephone and access. Hold on a sec. That includes that three thousand a year for which you're not paying this year. Yeah. Are we are we off that now? We should be. Okay. Make sure we're. Yeah. I haven't canceled it, so 
Yeah, let's, we'll talk about it. Okay. It's been going up on YouTube and it's seemed to work. I mean, it's still a little bit of a manual process, but it goes up there fairly easy. Okay. Um, can walk through. Uh, telephone and data, uh, 4,100. Does that include the 3,000 that we paid? No, the, no, in, no in, in our calculation here, I have, um, I have the 3,000 separately. Okay. All right. So it's still... So, so in between those two lines, you spent uh, just you spent about seven thousand dollars. Okay, so that's yep. probably not unreasonable. Yeah, that's fine. Um, electricity and heat. Yeah, electricity. Seven thousand uh, is going to be reduced by three. You said we're planning on reducing it, so I would only ask something to move it. We're, we're trying to work with Peg Central to right. get rid of the service and leverage YouTube only, because YouTube we allow to do it for nothing, mm -hmm. and we're you know I think the service is. It renews every November, December, so we kind of want to make a decision by then. So that the challenge is some of the equipment doesn't allow us to automate some things. So we're trying to figure out right. how we can get a person out of the process. Right now, I literally pull down the video the tomorrow morning down, and then I push it up to YouTube. I have the ability to do it, but it's still it's too much handle. Peg Central sort of just flows through, but it costs us three thousand dollars to have it. So we're trying to figure out a way to get right to remove the budget. Um, electricity heat. Electricity twenty five hundred. Okay, so we're we're on the button there. Uh, building repairs three thousand fifty one. Question I have on that is that building is that that looked to me to be in need of some paint. Yeah. And I read your description, um, and I didn't see that we were you only had budgeted really a thousand for that. Uh, excuse me. Um, the central layer was installed. Yeah, so that's why I decreased it. But if uh, the painting was supposed to be done by prisoners or something like mm -hmm. that, I think we had worked it up trying do to we, work. Do it. we have that? Yeah. Um, it, it hasn't happened yet, but it's been on it, Kevin's it, radar. It's been it, it, it's on the schedule. Um, that said, we, we, we should put it in this. Budget. We should keep it in this budget. Right. We, 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 you should have a provision. I thought of they were suspending the program. No, no, no. they they no. brought the they brought the program they back. They brought it back for a thousand bucks a week. But if okay. we put if we put the thousand because it's yeah, it's a thousand bucks a week. So if we put the thousand bucks back in here, that will. Oh, I agree with you. Um, give us well, a he, place. Yeah, his, what his, whatever his apportioned share is. <coughs> right. Because exactly. I'm sure, you, you the new program is that you have to pay for a week's worth of. Uh, right. Yeah, you pay for a week. You pay a thousand bucks a week, so we try to allocate out accordingly. So, you know, if you put in five hundred, uh, put my, in a thousand. My point yeah. is, I just want to make sure the building gets yeah taken care of. Yeah, well. to get a um, let's see. I uh, so what are we going to leave that uh, leave it at a thousand, or is it going to be two thousand? Did we just say for building repairs? To me, it should be more than a thousand. If you're going to spend a yeah. thousand dollars on painting the building, I was going to say, shouldn't wouldn't twenty five? Let's call it. Have to purchase the paint. Yeah, let's call it. Let's call it two thousand because part of that. Say twenty five hundred or twenty five hundred. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll call twenty five hundred. Will um, they be able to paint the building in a week? At, sure. Building. Oh yeah. I would think so. Oh, yeah. I figured that. I figured uh, that. I'm just asking to make sure. As you should long see them as work. as long as our week on the schedule is a week that doesn't rain. Yeah. Or it's snow. not overcast. <laughs> is not snowy. The <laughs> the role of the dice we have with the prisoner program is it's great except you get on the schedule when you're on the schedule. Yeah. And if the weather doesn't accommodate you that week, happen, you do other projects. So. Okay. Um, general supplies, uh, $81, and equipment purchases, thirty-two fifty. Yeah, I'm going to be buying some batteries for the cameras, and that's going to be around $200, mm -hmm. so that'll be in the equipment repairs and maintenance. Oh. And it, the, we're trying to get some, we keep trying every year to try to get interest with people to come in and learn public access and go out and do some videos and things like that, but we haven't been successful with that. Um, but we have s slowly started to do a few things here and there. And Isn't that's there, is there a program at the school that would do that? I've tried almost every year to get, we need a sponsor. We need a teacher there that's going to oversee it and work with the kids, and we have not been able to get somebody to do that. Okay. There's interest with individual teachers, but nobody wants to raise their hand to, they may have an individual project they want to do, 
but there's nobody has has been nobody there to say they'd like to like run an AV club or something there. Mm. It's, not, it's not happened yet. Okay. So I guess we're at are we at equipment purchases. Uh, equipment purchase. Yeah. Which is for your capital improvements. And yes. So what we're trying to do, what I'd like to do this year is to make a few infrastructure changes. Um, we have a difficult time trying to get messages on the channels right now. The equipment we have is, it's not as good as what we used to have. We had a product that we bought 10 years ago that is now outdated and they don't support it anymore. So I wanted to upgrade that. I was able at home to be able to just make a slide and then push it up. Um, we can still do that, but it's much more complicated with the infrastructure that we have right now. And I'd like to get back to that. And um, I don't even think we have to. I, I did some investigation today, and the products that this company makes, um, there's some much cheaper ones than the ones that I, I estimated from the original gear that we bought uh, 10 years ago. They were about $8,000 a piece. And I think we can probably do that for around $4,000 a piece. So you might be able to have this. Um, and it'll actually put what they call a bug, which is where you get an overlay of the channel, you know, puts a station logo, that kind of thing, and the time and date, so it's a little bit more. It gives a better, a more professional look to the to the channels. Okay. We is that, is that what that two digital signage units for titling and expanded? Uh, yes, area? exactly. Yep. So from instead of the fifteen thousand, you're thinking somewhere around eight to ten. Eight to ten. Yeah. Yeah, they've made a lot of changes in the last 10 years with that equipment. And then we're, we're struggling with basic title generators that just, you, you, you're able to type in what the meeting is and have it program. You just hit a button and it just puts it up. So whether it's a board of selectmen meeting, whether it's a budget meeting, whether it's um, con conservation committee, that kind of thing. Uh, so I'm looking at, at getting two or three of those. So you're replacing the one that's like the ones back there. Yeah. And uh, we have two GL2 portable cameras, which are high-resolution cameras that we've had for years. Batteries are all dead on them. So I wanted to get some replacement camera uh, batteries for those. And that's pretty much it for what we're planning to do for this year. And we started out the year with putting that screen in. And we added a couple of cameras and at this location in Campbell. All right. Jason, you have the account. We, I know we modified some of that. Um, so. I can put it together quickly here. Um, we removed 2,000 and we added 1,500. So the net, the, the net is 500. Sure. So it's 40... 40,300. Yep. We should be dropping down that equipment purchases. Oh, from 20... Well, he had 15, right. but I think that included the five. It was just one line item. And he said that he thought we could 8 to 10, I think is what Dick, you said, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so if you call it 30,500, then. So that assumes 10 there. Is everyone good with it? No, it's too much. 30,500? It it's, it's too little. I mean, it was, it was 15 originally. He's saying it's 8 to 10, so let's make that 10. Still fifteen, so it's only a reduction of five thousand more. Oh, sorry, I, I took an extra five thousand out. Let's call that 30, 30, thirty-five thousand five hundred. Oh, yes, thirty-five thousand three hundred. <laughs> you keep on trying to put money back in. <laughs> um, we, we chances are we're going to underspend that anyway. Right? Yes. No, we've, we've that. Have you considered the possibility of I'll call it subscribing to some other towns' broadcasts? That may be of interest. For yeah, example, we're Derry, actually looking at Derry, that. Derry has a yeah. program that I know actually the, the people who broadcast it, and they do a lot of interviewing. For example, they interview Kelly Ayotte. They do yep. a lot of stuff like that. Actually, looking at that, it's that infrastructure is getting easier and easier to pull down what they call MPEG videos. There's a lot of towns that are producing those. We are looking at that. Would that change any of your? No. Okay. Yeah, no, because it's it's basically you just. A lot of it is free, is free subscription. 
mm -hmm. some of it is minimal uh, purchase. They, some of the fees they charge, we could easily use it out of the equipment repairs and maintenance and minor tools and supplies. They don't, anyone, any programs that get charged for it's a, it's a minimum expense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So bottom line budget, bottom line budget as we discussed is 35,300. Want to make a motion? So okay. moved. Do I have a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Further discussion? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go, 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 go. The top, the contracted service, did mm -hmm. you deduct for that? Yeah, it's, yep. it stays at 6,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Now we're at $2,500 on the building repairs. And yeah, what happened went, went down, so it's a $500 difference, and we reduced by 5,000 at the bottom, so. Gotcha. Are we? Did you mention how much we had right now since we we started a year ago, right? What the we started accruing. Um, Make sure we're still within that. Because that's the other thing too. The capital should come out of the, the residual, not the op, right? Because the, the the operating is fifty thousand. Whatever's left goes to the capital. Shouldn't we be drawing out of that for the capital? It's all in the same. Fund. No, I understand. It's all in the same fund bucket. It's all in the same fund bucket now. It's yeah. all in the same. But, um, mechanics for a second. This is a question. Yep. So middle of the year, let's say we decide we're going to finally do streaming because we figured out how we get it done. Right. Can we come back and ask for additional money out of that fund? Sure. Yeah. Because it's there, right? It's just we just need to ask right. the board. If, so, yeah. if there's a different capital need, because you know the the again the capital needs are not even, so right. there is a balance, a trailing balance. So if something comes up, you know, or if well, the board is ages to expand. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah. So we so can go. I just want to make sure there's no one bite to the apple. You know, if, if we end up, for instance, you know, in a situation where we c continually are double booked for a committee some evening, and we come up with a plan to light up another room with cameras. Well, that's what we we did talk about. You, and I you know, about that. we would yeah. then you know be in the position to come back and say, this is what it's going to take to light up that room. And th this is this is the funds. This is what you have in the available balance. I would just suggest those meetings get moved to other days. That's all. This is my take on it. <laughs> it's much we easier to do We talked about doing this uh, back room. Right. Oh, God. I mean, put a couple uh, cameras in yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, that's our other spare meeting space here. Is that back room? All right. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Stained. Motion carries five zero zero. Dick, thank you very much for your time. I had one other thing. Um, the appointments, cable committee already appointment. been approved. Is that all set? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I know it's not always easy, so thank you. <laughs> all right, almost to seven o'clock. Let's see. Uh, let's move on to the administrative report. Let's just do one topic and then we'll do for public input. Which one do you want to start with? Which one's longer than the other? Which one's longer than the other? Um, they're all kind of about the same. So well, if we take them in order as listed, okay. uh, annual policy review. Uh, we have a group of policies that are slated for annual review. Yep. Um, they're all in the folder that are linked below over the next few weeks. <coughs> looking to see if we need to make any adjustments to those and people can forward them along. Um, just because they're up for review does not mean that every one of them needs to be adjusted. Um, <laughs> we've gone through some of these with a fine tooth comb over the past couple of years. Um, so part of it is, you know, are there circumstances that have changed? And I'll take a look at them too. The more that we can knock out over the next You know, Frank weeks. just took you up for your challenge, right? I, I yes. <laughs> um, the fine tooth comb that I was referring it's to. It's Frank. Um, <clears throat> and he's, he's, our, he's our resident, he's our resident fine tooth comb. He finds all That's the right fine. things. That's um, fine. But it makes it better. It does. It does. And, and, so, and honestly. It's not it, what you said a year ago. <laughs> I've, I've. He I'm was more, less gray back a year ago. I'm, I'm more mellow I, now. Um, we but get that way, don't we? It is. It is. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, just as a, a thing on this, would it make sense if we identify? We have to do this when, Jason, by the end of the month? I would, as many as we can do by the end of the month. Um, we can also. 
What I'm wondering about is if it would make sense just to identify, say, three of them that we'll do at the next meeting. Okay. And be done with it, and then do on to the next ones right after that, the next meeting. I don't know. So why don't we? So why don't we take them in order, right? So yep. there's background check policy, cash check policy, conference meeting policy, and credit card policy. If we can get those approved at the next meeting, great. And then we'll take the, we'll take the rest of them afterwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I don't see a lot of those changing. So that way we can split it up and okay. you know spend the whole yep. meeting on it. Mm -hmm. That's fine. And yeah, again, so if everybody can read through them and send comments or, to Jason. Or send me send me questions too. Uh, because you know there's a bunch of these that happen the 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 actual operation probably happens outside of what you see and know every day. So if you want if you have questions about, you know, yep. what do you do when the credit card bill comes and, in? And what do you do when it when a cash comes in? And it's good for us all to know them anyway, so too, yeah. So which we should know. Okay. So those four will be Reviewed and pre-approved on the 28th meeting. Yep. And then I would suggest take the next four or, or the next six and get them done. Yep. Okay. <coughs> um, policy. Um, I'll be quick. I, I can be fairly quick on the uh, speaking of policies. We we'll give give you one more to uh, take a look at. Um, social media policy. Yeah. Um, this has been sort of on my back burner for a while. Uh, we continue to rely on it. It's probably a good idea for us to formalize a policy. Police and fire have been considering more department-specific policies given the type of information and circumstances they face. I know both the fire chief, uh, the fire chief attended a workshop earlier this year, and he and the police chief have been collaborating on how on their specific issues, uh, which is fine. That's a department. That's a standing department thing. It's not, and that's more directed to individuals' it, social activity versus the town's. Right, activity. exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a discussion that came up on the manager listserv back in February on this topic, and I borrowed from a policy or two that seemed very appropriate. Um, so I had circulated it amongst our department users here, uh, and said I finished it back before town meeting. I've had it on the back burner since we've been dealing with some other issues. Um, thought is, with, as with others, I'm introducing it for initial review, can collect comments and address if we can then consider at a future meeting. Well, could I suggest that we do a first pass review at the next meeting also and just get, or at least ask for comments by the next meeting? I think that. so. I'm sensing at least one member might have some comments now. He has that I have comments look. Do you find? Yeah, but uh, well, let's, I mean, well, first, first off, it says that the comments pertaining to any of the following inappropriate forms of content shall not be permitted on the town social media sites and are subject to removal by the town administrator, board of selectmen, or the designees. Comments not related to the original <coughs> topic, profane, obscene, or pornographic content, da, 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 da. I guess my point is, I don't think the town wants to get into the idea of being a webmaster per se or gets into the content of being a or gets into the position of being a um, censure I, I just don't think we want to put the town into that position is all i'm saying well i think the challenge is, is the nature of no social media so the town has active an active facebook page <coughs> and an active twitter page plus the police department the fire department also have it as an outreach to the community. There's a lot of followers on it. There's a lot of information exchanged there. It's really, it, it was always designed as more of a, a sort of a, a broadcast out, but the nature of those, those, those tools, people have the ability to put comments in. And one of the things that actually stemmed them was there was a recent posting on one of our postings that just was really, deformed. it was just wrong. And so it was removed. But the point being is, is that I think we have to have some guidelines that says, because we can't stop commenting. That's the problem, right? So if we post something that says, hey, it's a great day, spring day, and all of a sudden someone decides to go throw the F-bomb and this other thing out there, we can't stop them from doing it, but we can block it when we see it and manage it. And that's so that's I, really I understand the I understand the intention. I guess what I'm concerned about is the effect that this will have, because you'll end up and an ongoing struggle forever and ever and ever being the police officers of what gets posted on the web. And, and I'm just thinking that that 
while I understand that Facebook and Twitter and all that fun stuff mm -hmm. has the ability for people to post and everything else, I think it raises the question is, do we want to get the town into that type of a position? That's all I'm, I'm so saying. What would you? Hmm. I don't know the answer yeah. to what I would say. I would say regulated by who has the authority to post on the behalf of the town. That that is that's already sort of regulated now. It's already regulated. That's already regulated by that. So it's really about, as I said, there was an example of someone putting you know a personal attack based on one of our posts under our name, and so everybody who saw that posting saw the personal attack too. So the idea is is that you know we sat there going. Mm. We're not supposed to do, what do we do, right? We pulled it, but the point being is we want to make sure that it's within the guidelines of the town that says, yeah, we should pull it because we, we're not supporting personal attack. But when you have a, a, a media that allows for the unabridged ability of anybody to post anything there, yeah. how are you going to even make this policy stand? I mean, other than the fact that you're going to have to go through their daily... Well, the, the, yeah, so the interesting, the, in, the interesting thing is, is that we've been... Our Facebook page and Twitter page has been around for four years, I think, so far. I think I started it back when I took over the website, which was I haven't seen one post on it yet. There's tons of posts on it. There's tons. Of There's tons. There's tons. But you know, and 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 and, 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 and uh, good. <laughs> Just stay off too. So, um, but the reality, I mean, the, the the interesting thing is, is that it hasn't been a problem. We haven't had any of these issues. We recently had the issue, which Guard is thinking about: Do we need a policy? This gives us the ability to do it without. Whatever. Every time we post to the site, the, the, the administrators of the site, when someone else posts to it, gets an alert. So we do see the alerts as it happens. So we have the ability to quickly do it. I, again, I think, it's a, I think the board needs to consider it, but I also understand that we don't want to be the policing of it neither, but this is our Facebook page. It's meant to be a community page, and if it's going to be used as a, as a, um, you know, a method to get a message out to all the people about negative or bad, whatever, I, I just don't think we want to have that under the, under the name of Litchfield, New Hampshire. And, and, and this is part of the reason we've struggled with it in terms of how do you deal with, with the external pieces that are attached on, but then also your own, your own officials who are using it as well. I mean, we all kind of, you know, th th there's, a, there's a limited set of us that have administrative posting. We also kind of fly by the seat of our pants and, you know, of... We all have a good sense of what's right, but you know, that's also a little disconcerting too. And also, what happens when the when those personalities change? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, right now the content on the page, you no, know, there's no secret. The content on the page uh, that comes from Facebook is coming from John, me, and Terry Briant. Yeah, and for the most part, we're posting things that are of public interest. Right. Meetings. <laughs> video recordings, so we're using it as a method to get as much of our stuff out there. Every meeting that's been videoed is reposted on Facebook for people to go off and be able to watch it. Um, community updates, I mean, again, I, I, don't think, I don't think the real issue is really us per se, that the folks that are administrating it. It would help set some guidelines, but I think we've been within the guidelines anyway. It's really about when someone you know, adds a post or, or a comment, what do we do about the combat, especially if it's completely off color or against or personal attack or whatever? So, yeah. well, but I guess so let's noodle on it a little bit more. I just think yeah. that we should consider something. Yeah, yeah, but I, I am kind of sympathetic to the the challenge of what do you do and yeah, when you see it's not right. But I think Selective Byron makes a fair point. Once you start having a spot where you're plucking stuff off, you've now made a bad situation worse and. Yeah, well, it's, not, well, it's not just that. It's, it's who's going to be the who's going to be the judge and jury of what gets plucked off. If, mm -hmm. if somebody writes something on there that Frank Byron's a jerk, okay, and I don't like it, fine, I'm taking it off. Well, I mean, oh, well, we well then in that case, that. we send it to everyone we know, Frank. But, but, yeah, but, no, but we, 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 we promote it. <laughs> yeah, my, my no. point. My point is, you know, there's got there's a decision making process that has to occur, mm -hmm. and at times. Um, governments don't do a good job of making decisions. Yeah. So my point, my point is, um, I'm not sure that. So, so I, yeah. I just, just, just I, I, we'll, I think we're gonna have a lot of discussion rounds. Maybe even don't even. Let, let's have our first. Let's have a you know first read first comments back for the next meeting. It sounds like it's gonna be a lot more work to deal with it. 
I, I would just say that if someone made a comment, and this is my own opinion, if someone made a comment about one of the elected officials, that's fair game. When someone picks on a citizen on our page, that's not fair game. So it gets removed. I mean, I just think sometimes it is black and white. And to be honest with you, for four years, or how long the page has been there, I even forgot when I created it, it has not been an issue. So, question for you. So did this come up because of a recent, recent event? It's well, it, 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 it was kind of the chicken and egg. Like, I had this, I saw this, and, you know, John and I have talked casually over, over the past year or two of, hey, we should formalize something. And so I had done probably 90% of it. I sent him the copy of it, and then we had this issue come up, and... It was an interesting situation because I looked at it on the other side of, okay, well, you know, one, I don't want to necessarily be in the policing position, but if I'm sitting there and seeing something that is, that is to my view, clearly inappropriate attacking a citizen, you know, I have no leg to stand on to yank it. That's the other thing for me is in the absence of a policy, I just have to let it sit there. No, I yanked it and I admit it. Yeah, you know, um, but I, I looked at it and said, I don't really have the authority to pull that, um, yeah, or didn't feel that. If it becomes that much of a problem, it should just be gotten rid of. It's not. That's that's what I'm saying. I think the, I think the page has done much better, much good, and continues to do good, especially the police department and fire department ones. I mean, a lot of this stuff. I said this back when we were making all these policies before. At what point do we make a policy on how to make policies? Well, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I, like I said, I think the, the whole reason why the policy even came up, and I do want to move on, but it just became, we had an incident we haven't had, maybe we're overreacting to the incident, but by the nature of that, I just think we need to have some clear guideline for it, and I, I don't think getting rid of the page makes any sense at all, because that's our avenue out to, you know, we're supposed to be getting as much information out to the people, and to be honest, our, you know, people, does, people do go to the website, but a whole lot more follow the Facebook page than any place else. And you know we're, when we're doing storm announcements and emergency stuff out there, and we change over to it, that page skyrockets. And the Facebook page, again, the value of it is that during the election, they went there for information, and it was a lot of people. We've got a lot, and you know, a lot more followers on there. So I just, you know, I don't want to see the, I don't want to see it go away, but I don't want to see an incident create a problem where we, you know, the board says get rid of it, just turn it off, don't want it anymore, because I think that's a bad thing too. But let's see where it goes in the next next review. All right, anything else on this on this topic? All right, moving on. Um, let's go to public input. It is uh, ten minutes after seven. I apologize for the, the, the delay. Um, if there is anyone from the public who would like to speak, please come forward, state your name and address. Good evening, Jason. Great eleven Perry Court. Good evening, uh, Jason. Hey. Um, just quick on the Facebook on the Facebook thing. It's better than the thumbs column. At least you can semi have some understanding of who it is. True. Then, um, true. 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 You know, and even if it's you know, m most people realize. I, I, I've seen those kind of Facebook rants also, but people who are interested in uh, in Facebooking and, and 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 those things. They go yeah, scroll by, scroll by, scroll by. Pick what I want. So really, uh, unless you know, in my opinion, if someone broke the law, okay. Someone's unpleasant. Someone's unpleasant in public. You know, I, I know what I do to when people are unpleasant in public. I ignore them. So most people would too. You know, we're adults. Um, and so, and then we explain it to our children. So I don't know if you need a policy to do it. I, I think Frank has a good point in that it, it, once you start to censor things like that in, in the open public, um, it becomes more, that becomes the, the problem rather than someone dropped a, an, an unsavory word. Um, I know it, 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 over the course of, you know, since I've been here in 05, um, I've heard time and time and time and time again, and I believe it, uh, how important life safety is in our town, be it police officers in their vehicles or firemen and their equipment. Um, and it's used as a rationale for every budget that I've heard since since I've been here. Um, then in the paper a couple weeks ago, I see that we're shutting down the fire department on the weekends. I think it hurts your case in later budgeting times to say, oh, life safety, life safety, life safety, but you know we don't really need them on the weekends. 
And so I understand it's not as cut and dry and black and white as that. Um, but what I'm saying to you is, uh, as citizens out there who may have a house on fire, who you know, or or need help, uh, minutes make, and I'm sure Brent can attest to it. Minutes, minutes, are very important when it comes to life safety. Um, and I know Kevin knows that also. Um, so it was interesting to me to see that we're going to shut the fire station down on the weekends when the verbiage in the article said because of the default budget. I don't think that had anything to do with it because those kind of things should sit in the budget regardless of if you're in a default situation or a proposed situation. I don't think decisions should be made on whether, you know, which budget passes. There are things that in my work have to get done and life safety is one of them. We don't go, well, the budget's short this year. We're not going to do the safety items. You know, the heck with the public. We, we, we just can't afford to keep them safe. That never happens. Um, so I'll be interested in hearing, I, I think tonight on the agenda I saw this reallocation of funds in the default budget to, to, to meet the, you know, with the needs of what you guys are going to want to do this year. Um, I would really suggest looking at that because people in town who I've talked talk to and spoken to about that are very uneasy about that, um, as they should be. Um, so um, that and salaries, I'll be, I know, I know that um, I'll, be, I'll be interesting it, to hear about how you're going to reallocate the Board of Selectmen salaries uh, if, if you've chosen um, where those dollars go. I mean, that, that, that'll be interesting. I don't know if you've specifically said these 4,000 are going to go over here or that. No, it's just going to go to the bottom line. But um, um, salary increases for the rest of the staff, the town staff. I, I'll be interested in hearing if that comes up because... I know there's several of you that said you wouldn't love to see that on a warrant instead of just having it happen in the budget. But again, please look at the, um, pl please re review that, that thing at the fire station because uh, I, I, I don't think that was a good decision on your part. Um, thank you. Anybody else? All right, we'll close for public, we'll close the floor for public input. Um, I do want to make one comment with regards to Mr. Gret's uh, comments. Uh, first off, the decision to close, the not, let's put it this way, the decision to staff for station coverage for three hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday, um, that will happen in the very beginning of the budget process and the board, re, originally it was cut in half, or it, was, it was removed totally, we reinstituted the three hours and three hours. Call statistics don't support having staff there. Most calls happen outside of those windows as it is. With regards to the safety of the community, having the staff there does not impact the safety of the community. Um, the response times are almost the same. The interesting thing about weekends is that during the weekends, most of our firefighters, our call firefighters are in town and they do respond. The challenge we've had on the weekends is that sometimes covering the station correctly has been um, has been difficult to people's schedules. Most people don't want to give up three hours on a Saturday when they have chores and honeydew lists and stuff to do, but they'll respond when the alarm goes off. And I think one of the things about our firefighters is they do respond when the alarm goes off. So to imply this, that, that, this, that citizens are at risk or the community's at risk because of it, I, 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 I don't think that is the case. The fire chief has supported it. It's not, it's not the case. Our response times, our coverage does not support it. And again, you know, when you talk about priorities, we had to make some priorities. There were other there were other demands in the fire department budget that required that funding. So that's why it was done. Um, and it'll be looked at again next year or the next budget cycle. Okay. <clears throat> Where do we leave off? Uh, Moving back to our regular schedule agenda. Trust. Uh, yeah. And so new business health um, health trust rates. Uh, I, I attached our renewal rates for health trust that are effective July 1st. This is for maintaining the current roster of plans we have. Uh, guaranteed maximum rate was projected um, at an 8.5% increase, uh, which is the budget number we use. The renewal rate is 4.8%. Um, so since we budget for those six months, there's some, you know, and I hate to call it, but it's savings in our budget number for the last six months of the year. So what is the increase on four and a half, you said? Yeah, 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 4.8. 
4.8. So um, that um, difference is about $7,400. That's based on our current employee census. Now, understand that this does not take into consideration any further adjustments to benefit packages, which I know you've discussed an interest in, and I have not lost track of that. Yeah. Um, given the passage of teacher union contract, we also face a major decision by our July 2015 renewal. Um, as we will no longer be in the rating pool with the school district, and our base cost will increase. Right now, we're rated <coughs> with them with Health Trust, and so our rate is lower uh, because we're considered a sort of standalone group. When we drop into the small group without the school, I know last year we were looking at a rate increase of like 20, 30 percent because we were leaving our larger group pool. So the, the issue for us is kind of twofold of what do you want to do by this July, but you also have a big ticking package out there that we got to find a different way to deal with. And so part of it may be, let's take taking a look and see, can we deal with all of it now rather than deal with it twice? You know, I mean, I, I hate to go back. I hate to have to go to the well two times in a row and continue to like nibble away. And, and I'd rather see, can we find a decent comprehensive answer once? Right, and I think our goal was to start that in June. What was to look at all, all the alternatives if we can do it this year? Yeah, yeah. I need to knock it out a little sooner than that. I need to get it done. I need to get I need to get the first set of scenarios done probably in the next month or so. Just because we need to know by the end of May, beginning of June, what we're doing. Okay. Um, you know, there's a very simplistic one, and probably buried if you can read the codes on the sheets there. I mean, we had there are plans that will bump uh, basically just bump. The short version is same plan, but bump up the office visit. Um, there aren't a lot of choices through Health Trust right now. They offer kind of a $5 office and like a $20 office visit. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there obviously are some savings there. And so I've started looking at some of those numbers to see. Yeah, so what, do you know what <coughs> if went to a $20 copay, what that kind of savings would be? Um, What's the copay now? Five. 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 See, so went, uh, I went from five to ten, and our increase is like two point four this year in July. But of course, we're in a different pool. Yeah. We're in the uh, lower one, but it's it's a smaller group. I'm not. I, I know what they call it, the under one hundred pool or something. Yeah. Yeah. So our, yeah, I mean, it's a moving it's a moving target, kind yeah. of year to year to year. So. But, um, yeah, and, and, and our deductibles, you know, the de it makes a difference what your deductibles are, too. So, right. you know, you could be, uh, you know, your copay could be less, but your deductible higher, and vice versa. And then your yeah, prescription you plan. Other, right? so more, it, it, like Jason said, it's a moving target. You, you, there's so many options. You, you know, it's like pick something and then go and from then there. try to figure out. Yeah, I mean, the, so that's so if we take basically what we have now and you just put push up the, the uh, deductible based on the guaranteed not to exceed numbers because I, I ran, I started running these before. I have not run these in the past week since I got the new numbers from Health Trust. I figured a six month savings there would be about $6,500. Mm. So the, you know, an annual savings of uh, the 13,000. Um, and, and again, part of that too is, you know, we have um, it, you have the the employee share at 20 percent um, and the town share at 80 percent. You know, there's uh, you know we have the lion the the bigger chunk of that. One of the things I was looking at is trying to figure out where where the break the break even all because obviously the employee is going to say how much more cost are you putting on to us. Right. You know, and so figuring out what that break-even cost is for, okay, with the higher office visit but the lower premium, how many office visits does it take for you to break even versus pay more? Yeah. So. Okay, so when do you think, when do you think you'll have something back to the board? Probably beginning of May. Okay. 2014. 2000. <laughs> yes. I want to make sure. Yeah. No. Oh. All right. Does, does the board have any questions for Jason around the health trust? 
Do we know what the re I know there was also there's a return coming this year. Is that health trust refunding again? Yeah, yes. I have nothing. Contribution holiday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, there is a another one for property liability. Oh, it's property liability. Okay. Right. But it, um, you, you know, I, I put the note from the executive director. It's down under the informational items. It's called health trust return. Mm -hmm. The uh, as part of the settlement with the health trust um, property liability trust. LGC, Municipal Association type issues, um, health trust and property liability were set into two separate organizations. Um, however, it was determined that property liability owed health, I think like 17 million or some amount for starting workers' comp. At the time that it, they had to comply, property liability didn't have that spare cash. So they have actually merged back and given themselves to health trust. So health trust is now running health and property liability again. So we're kind of partway back to where we used to be. Okay. Um, woven into that somehow is that health trust is sending back to its members of just under $14 million of surplus that is assets of the property liability trust. Um, I have no idea yet how that's being allocated, uh, but this is not something that we anticipated. So in theory, once all of that becomes clear and they sort out with the regulators what's coming back and what their methodology is, we will see some additional money coming back. Now also, the, uh, Health Trust has money coming back. Which we already know, and we have right. all of that. Yeah. And yeah, we, we have the health, I mean, Health Trust is also reimbursing us for uh, 2012 and I think a remainder of 2000. Right. We've known that, and that's what we've gross appropriated because we keep some, we give some, and we give some. Right, back to, to former employees retire, that are entitled to, right. This, I don't know what the methodology is, so we yes. may get some more money back. I may have to do the same calculations to share it, or we may be able to retain it all ourselves. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, moving on to old business, default budget. So Jason, this is a follow-up. So last meeting, we re-leveled the budget. We accepted your modifications. And there was a question that was asked. This is to circle back to that question. Mm -hmm. OK, so the question was, I think it was Mr. Perry yep. asked about what items were, how much was the dollar amount around items that were completely deferred this year? What was the one-time removals and then any other adjustments? Mm -hmm. So Jason's providing, has provided us a spreadsheet that kind of calculates all that, but just for everybody who's following along. The rounded totals are, so the deferred items, things we just took out of the budget all together this year, we'll have to come back in next year, is $73,500. It was a one-time removal of $30,000, and I don't remember. What do you consider a one-time removal? That's how I was just going to remember. Um, what do I consider oh. a one-time removal? Um, I consider those things that um, were circumstances let us take it out. Um, so background check, um, I budget for a couple financial checks that I didn't have to do because people were able to provide current uh, items under the provision of the contract. Um, we made some structural shifts of the community service program, which um, for uh, the prison program, um, the dispatch coverage, the portion that we removed there, um, I kept that out. Um, I kept out uh, mm -hmm. a return to the fire department weekend coverage. So basically things that I said, okay, we looked hard and said, these probably are not going to come back as opposed to... And there'll be reductions in next year's budget. Uh, yeah, right. You know, where, um, and, and again, this was my judgment off the top of my head looking quickly. Uh, we may disagree and say some of those, what I called one time, you think are coming back or you may think are gone forever. Um, you know, there's obviously, you know, the, there's, there's a number there. I looked at the type of things where I said, well, we should at least have a conversation as opposed to a deferred item when I reduce to the bare minimum the, the amount we need for police department ammunition this year because we have some in stock, you can expect that we'll probably okay. want to restock that stock next year. So that's kind of what I think of as deferred versus one time. Does that make sense, Frank? 
I mean, a lot of a lot, vaguely. I mean, a lot of ways you can say there is no one time. It's just it's seventy three thousand plus thirty thousand is the next year is coming back. But the, the, a lot of the reductions of thirty thousand dollar column is, is reductions we took in the budget. We don't believe we need next year anyway, because either new information, low better rates, or changes yeah, I, in our behavior. I guess. Yeah, well, I I didn't want to set us up and say, well, everything everything that came out is coming back next year. Yeah, because no. that's not fair. Yeah. Uh, and we know that part of it just is, hey, we have better information because when did you start looking at these? September. And, you know, by March, we know much more and have experience behind us. And then the last piece is, okay, budget's defeated. One of the things that we need to do is take a hard look at what we're doing and where are some of those things that maybe we should not just keep doing because we kept doing them. And we did it this year and, you know, will we revisit it next year? I think it's going to, you know, the spreadsheet you have would be a good reference when we start doing the budget next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. And, and again, you know, it's my view. So I, I imagine that if we all sat and everybody went through it, you would put some things in different buckets than I did. But we would generally be in the same ballpark. Um, I do want to also tell you as part of this, I took the um, reallocations you took last time and, or, um, and, and we, I plugged those in. So you're going to see those in the budget reports. Right. And this is sort of... I think of, last week was... I think what's the You should have seen... Yeah, they've been in, they've been in since the last meeting. I, I will tell you that, yes, we missed sending them out a week because... Terry was... Yeah, I know. You, you know, because it just slipped our minds because Terry wasn't here. Um, so they're in there now. Um, down... And, and I'll keep a separate sheet now. Um, if you look on the site, way down toward the bottom, there's, there's something called reference items. Um, and I've shared with you the default budget spreadsheet, which is basically your re the reallocation you approved last time. So we all know sort of the reality is no sooner probably did you approve that that the next day some circumstance changed somewhere. I mean, that's how this always works. So um, there's a second spreadsheet there called Projected 14. And this is something where I am trying to keep up with um, probably on a monthly basis. Uh, I tend to do this at the end of the year um, normally, but now I'm doing it earlier in the year. This is going to be my running projection of actual line item expenses as I'm projecting them for the year based on my best information at the time. So it's based on the expense report plus what you know. Right, is coming exactly. Like so yeah, it is, it is sort of the, the informed update. You know, <coughs> you can't just look at the expense report and multiply it out and say, hey, you're done five months, so therefore this will be 12 months. Um, the good news at this point is that um, I'm showing us performing better um, than um, my first thought, which doesn't I mean that, you know, I try to be pessimistic when I put together the numbers the first time. And obviously you guys approved one set of numbers and then I finished plugging them in and no sooner did I plug them in, I get that notice from Health Trust. That's 75, you know, whatever that number was, $75,000, dollars that counts. So you take a couple of those and you see where we are. And the reason I want to be able to have that is, um, you know, we cut pretty aggressively in some areas. So as those numbers look realistic, I would expect that it would be reasonable if we want to double back and have a conversation about some of the things that we may have deferred to say, do we want to revisit that because circumstances look like we can deal with it? Or circumstances look like they can't. So, Mr. Perry, I know the, the, the start of this conversation was your question. Does that help what you were asking? Yeah. Does the board have any other any other comments or concerns or are we is it, do we think we're in the right direction at this point? I mean, there's still a lot more. Well, I think so. I think Jason did a good job on that. So. Yeah, I think just look at, you know, keep track of the expense line. see where it's, things are tracking and we'll go from there. Anything else on this subject, guys? Are we finalizing this? Is the budget going forward, or we are, we've already we approved? Finalized last your last meeting. Yeah, we've already approved. Well, we already no. We and I remember very clearly that I said, "Populate this, and let's take a look at this at the next meeting and see if it makes sense." And uh, we, I don't recollect any motion made that that was our budget. 
Um, the motion was made, it was, but I, I, I'd, have, I'd have to go pull a bit. But again, but if, the, if, the, if the board wants to review the allocations as they stand, let's Well, let's, I'm, I'm looking from strictly the point of making sure that I have something that's got the imprimatur of the Board of Selectmen on it to present to the Budget Committee. So you want to make, we can make a motion to both the bottom line as it's been adjusted, which is the default budget. That makes sense. I mean, so this, moved. This, I mean, what you're seeing in this default revisions is our our current budget today, as we discussed and reviewed last week. Uh, right. So the operating budget, as a result of uh, as a result of the default, is five million seven thousand four hundred eight dollars. The board of selectmen took. Um, task the town administrator and, and department heads to look at their budgets and start figuring out how to fit into the numbers we had and obviously pushing there was some pushing and pulling to put different things in different places and the results is all the department heads are in agreement with their with their appropriations has been outlined in the spreadsheet and what's in the um, expense report can, so, can, wait, hold on hold on Hold I on. thought we uh, you can, you, voted on the bottom you voted line. On this, you voted on this at yeah. your last meeting. Yeah, we did, Frank. We voted um, on the I bottom line. I have Selectman uh, B. Lemire motion for the Board of Selectmen to move forward with the outlined budget recommendations. Selectman F. Byron seconds the motion, but then would like to amend the motion. He would like to amend the motion to add back into the budget the stipend for the help officer that Jason suggested be deferred, with the exception of only the Selectman stipends being Sorry. deferred. Selectman K. Bork seconds the amendment. Vote carries 5-0-0. Selectman Jay Brunel asked the board to vote on the main motion. Vote carries 5 0 0. So, we have, so our budget is. We, we have passed. approved it. So, you withdraw your motion? I do. So, we have a mo So the budget is, has been documented is the, is the budget. And I'm usually the one looking this up in the meeting. <laughs> Where is that listed? He's got it in the minutes. It's in the minute, yeah. About five eighths of a scroll down, page ten. So I mean, it sounds like we're good. We have a we have an approved appropriation. Are you just gonna confer? Go ahead, and keep going. Okay. All right. So I don't see any other action needed in the budget. This can be shared with the. Obviously, with the budget committee, if they're interested, it's probably in their portal, I would assume, right? Or it can be put in their portal. Okay. <clears throat> and again, the, the budget, the budget uh, reports the past few weeks. Of the oh, it has the allocations. Right. So that's it, how that's how they typically review it, anyway. So right, they've all reflected right. your numbers there. So. Okay. All right, moving on then. And if you need to come back, Frank, we can. If you think we're we need to adjust something. Um, Fairpoint uh, abatement request? Fairpoint abatement request. Um, you'll recall that we've been having an ongoing <laughs> disagreement with Fairpoint over the taxation of their right. <clears throat> um, they have filed uh, cases in Superior Court. They basically challenged every town in the state that has taxed them. Um, you, from time to time, you will see, and it might even be in this week's AP vouchers you see we pay Upton and Hatfield and we're in an alliance of 40 or 50 towns that are all working together through shared council. Mm -hmm. um, so the latest update here is that um, Fairpoint has, and I shared a letter of Fairpoint has taken offense to Avatar's request for additional information on their latest abatement application. Uh, you'll recall that prior year's abatements are still being litigated. Um, obviously, that letter was copied to Upton and Hatfield, who probably got 40 more of the same ilk. Uh, you also see the follow-up follow letter from Gary Roberge at Avatar uh, recommending denial of the 2013 abatement application since no data was provided or any evidence to support. Uh, and note Fairpoint's refusal to provide any supporting documentation. Okay. So there's no action for us to take at this point? Um, the, the, the action would be to deny their uh, abatement application. Wasn't that already in the... Uh... I was not in the consent agenda. Th this was notable enough that okay. um, you, you may have gone past it in the folder already with all of the paperwork, but officially um, it, <coughs> would be a, uh, 
a, a vote following Avatar's recommendation to Oh, uh, it's right here. Yeah. Right. And ultimately, I expect there will be, at some point, hopefully within this year, a uh, proposal uh, from council and Fairpoint and uh, the assessors to probably settle the whole okay. package. I expect that that's where this is going. Uh, and I expect you'll probably see a multi-year settlement like we that's, looked at with Panacha. Okay. Here's the letter and stuff is in here, the, the denials here. So I'll make a motion that we um, deny Fairpoint's abatement request for 2013 as recommended by Avatar. Second. Motion's been made and seconded by Mr. Perry. Discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Motion carries 5 zero, zero. Uh, I just need one more signature on this. I think it's yours. All right, moving on. Media relationship. Media, Late relations. Media relations, yeah. Um, in the summer of last year, uh, board took uh, an action, uh, sort of sifting, they were, you were sifting through how you wanted to handle inquiries from the press. <coughs> and we ended up with a motion that had, it is the chairman of the board or someone he appoints handle speaking to the press. Um, and I wanted to clarify what the board's intent here was. Uh, there have been some recent issues with formal policies by a nearby school board on this type of issue. And I wanted to clarify that it's the board's preference that media inquiries are routed to the chair or the TA. But any board member as an elected official can provide an opinion when asked. Uh, and also, to that end, is it also the preference of the board that in such a case the chair be advised that a media inquiry was received? So uh, but not prohibit individual members from the board from or feeling as if they are prohibited from speaking with the press. Yeah. What at the court case? What was the um, the suit? What is it, Timberlane or Timberlane? Yeah. yeah. Um, what would, the thrust of that was a lack of free speech yeah. type of deal. Yeah, yeah. and, and See, prior prior restraint. I mean, it, because I, I think they were very formal in that everything goes to the chair and you shall not. Right. Yeah, I I just I mean when this when we start talking about this again, I I, I still don't remember that what happened last year in August last year when that came up and it was a discussion was it was always my at least when I would prior to me being chair it was always my understanding that that the board was represented by the chair and or their delegate and that any member was able to talk but the issue was be you know it represents the right power. the only one that my impression is the only one that can that is able to share the opinion of the board as a whole is the chair yeah separately i like you said i you know i certainly have a right to my opinion i guess may not be shared but whether i share it or not it's probably not going to happen but I think the board as a whole, the chair yeah. should be it should be deferred to the chair to give the position of the board. So I, I or the vice chair. I, 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 I as chair and, and you know Frank has certainly been approached by the um, by the press even recently, and you know my old ask was just <laughs> let the chair know that it's even yeah you know, let let the body know that it's occurring and. You know, I think in that case, I said, hey, I'm not available. Certainly, you're the one closest to it. Go right ahead and answer them. And I thought I did. I, I tried to do it as quickly as possible just so that it wouldn't be delayed. Um, I, this is not, to me, this was not put up. I, when this happened, I actually thought it was already the policy of this board in general, or the, it was the practice of that board. And I think if you, I had to go back and watch the video to see the dialogue, and that's exactly what I said. And that's exactly, I think, the time the board's, yeah, we thought we thought that was what it was, and we just clarified it. I think it's important because of the Timberline issue that we are all elected officials, we all have an opinion, and we certainly can speak our opinion. Um, I think it's just important that when we're talking about actions of the board or content that relates to the town, that we be as accurate as possible. And if we don't have the right information, we should allow the 
the folks that have the right information to be able to communicate that. Um, we none of us individually should speaking should be speaking for the board, personally. Well, unless you're tapped. <laughs> what, no. and what I mean by that is, you know, if you get a, if you get a phone call, I, I think the example in this case was, I think it was HLN reached out to Frank and Frank, you know, provided some information and they never reached the chair. And I, I did a follow up to the, because Frank was kind and caught me on his response and the gut read problem was, was, it was around some action that was going on and I don't want to rehash it, but, you know, I responded back, you know, copying Frank and the person and, and get basically going, just to clarify, you know, Frank's right on, you know, Frank's 100% totally agree, you know, this is some clarification on the last part. I never got a response back, you know, so I don't even know if my message ever made it there. I just think it's important to make sure that, um, that if we're asked a question, especially if we may not have all the content, you know, the right content, either reach out to the TA to get it, but also let the board know it's occurring, um, just so that we're all aware. But I don't think it's meant to be a gag order by any stretch of the imagination. No. At least I would want uh, to. I mean, I, I don't want to, I, to be honest, I don't, I shouldn't say it this way, but I, you know, I, I, I'm way too candid for the for the press conference. Well, <laughs> so no, but I, I may say something the wrong uh, way. There have been a couple of times where they've asked me, like, telegraph people of, of what happened. You know, like fire department incidents when I was fire chief. Mm -hmm. But I always let you know because these are only factual items that I shared. Well, and I said the department head, yeah, ultimately you're responsible to do that anyway. But I always let you know, and I I, I copied the chair because now I'm in a different position and. Yeah. I think it's important that protocol is, we've done fine for now. I, I, to I me, it's not an issue. I just, I think the Timberline thing raised the issue. Let's re-clarify. I think as Jason just restated is what the intent was. If if anybody has any concerns about the intent. Um, well, my, my only point is that you have a motion that was made on August 26, 2013, that basically says that only the chairman of the board of selectmen or someone he appoints to handle speaking to the She'll handle speaking to the press, mm -hmm. period. And that was voted in 500. Right. So right now, I know that that may not be your interpretation, but that's not what the motion says. Well, I know the motion says, when we had the discussion, the dialogue that's wrapped around this whole thing is not in the minutes, but if you watch the video, because I did go back and watch the video. Yeah, well, wasn't the intent, Frank, is that on official board items? That's not what the motion says. It's all no, no, I understand, but, the, the, but like John said, it was... And I know where you're going with that, but the thing is, I think the intent was that on official board items, that that's the way that this board would operate. If the, if I, was, I was responding to a question that was asked of me now, and it was dealing with, um, well, there was a several incidences that happened, one of which was dealing with whether we were going to bring forward a warrant article for expanding the available hours that establishments can stay open. And um, well, that was just a recent one, right? That was the one that with WMR, which and then there was W. No, there was one even before that. And then WMR, WMUR came and wanted to speak. And yeah, they wanted me to. <laughs> and I basically said that you need to go to the chairman of the board. Mm. Yeah, and I, I think I reached back to you and said, "Go ahead and call him because I was going to be around." Um, the so if you, I guess my point is, if you right now. I see that the board is underneath the control of basically only the chairman can speak, and if that has to be changed or, or modified, then I think the board should do that. I thought we made a very similar motion years ago. We, we, did. we did. It's been, it's been it seemingly been that way. We did, me. but there was incidences where um, several of the selectmen were talking to the press and things like that, so I felt that it was okay to do, and I was the one that could call on it. So that's fine, and I'm not saying that in a derogatory or whatever way, but that was a result when we made the motion back in August, and that's the, way, the, the reason that came up. Send everything to that chair. Everything. Make sure it's all you, me. John. That's fine with me. Uh, it's over, whoever, but, whoever is the chair. Unfortunately, you're going to be highlighted as being a organization that does not believe in the First Amendment rights of individual selectmen. Yes. Should well, we I qualify it by saying um, spokesperson for official board action? Well, I think that the problem is, is that the, the, the thing that happened on the 26th was more than what, it was specifically about the fire department and the closure in August. 
it was a question that was asked and the information that came back was just, it was correct, it just was missing other content I thought would help clarify it. So that's, that, that was what happened. I'm not even day. sure if I was involved in that one. To be yeah, I, I, I have the email. Because like I said, okay. you, caught, with, with, sorry, you caught me on it. It was there. And so like in the WMR about the building one, that was just before the election in March. So that, that, they reached out to you, you know, they reached out to you as a member. I guess they reached out to me too, but they called the number that I, like, they called my daughter's phone. You told me they were reaching out to you. I said, hey, you're the best person to answer. Feel free to answer. I wasn't going to be around. I was out of town that day. So I think that's, you know, partly that's, the, that's how it works, and I think that's fine. No one was ever meant to, to hand tie any member to speak their mind, especially when you sit out, when you wear all the hats around here too, right? You got, you got a state rep. I can't stop you from talking as a state rep, nor could, should we. And that was, and, and by the way, as I said, I always thought that was the policy of the board. If it wasn't the policy of the board, I didn't want it. <laughs> so feel free to abolish and say anybody can talk. I have no problem with it. This is not me trying to control the board. I did not, just so everybody knows, I didn't ask for it to happen that way. It was always my understanding that's the way it was. Because I think, Frank, when you were the chair, you were taking care of all the press inquiries at the time. And I thought, again, when I came on board, that was seemingly the practice. It's always been the practice. Well, I think it's, cur it's courtesy. I think it, it's professionalism. And the, the official votes or official positions of the board should be represented by the chair or the vice chair. Because I could get it wrong, and I don't want to get it wrong. And that's where I think that we should stick by that. That's what we've done all along, and that's the way I think we should keep it. It doesn't Brett say Lemire that you asked, can't give your opinion. But if Brett Lemire is asked how the day is going for him, he can That's fine, him. yeah. But the official position of the board on any act should be given by the chair or the vice chair. To me, I'm going to defer. I agree with you. I would too. Then, hmm. then would you consider a motion along the lines of it's the preference of the board that the chairman of the board or his designee speak to the press regarding actions of the board of selectmen? I'm fine with that. Yeah. Well, does that capture your intent? Yes. Okay. And just to further clarify, um, the dialogue that started on August 25th is what started the August 26th motion. And it was an inquiry from the press to Frank and where Frank responded and kept, kept, kept me as chair in the loop, which is perfectly what I would like to see because I think we all should know what's going on. And it was. There was a specific, it was a question around the historical society, oh, okay. right? And then there was a very direct question, I think, about the fire department and about Saturday coverages in August, okay? And Frank responded back and said he had no recollection about, you know, about this being you know, brought to the attention of the board and all that. And I just chose to clarify the fire department part because I knew a little bit more about what was going on because it was sort of in flux. Um, and I 100% concurred on Frank's statements around the whole town, whole town hall because he was aware of it. I didn't have any background on that. So, I don't think anything happened here, but that that became the crux of the motion or the discussion. And again, I don't think there was anything wrong here in a sense of he was asked a question, he answered it to his best ability. I and he let me know it happened, copying it, and I responded to the, the person inquiring, copying Frank I also just so that we all knew about it. Right? And just to clarify, you know, the town's position, because I think it was concerned about, you know, this typical issue about no coverage means the department's closed and Communities at risk, and that's, yeah. that's not the case. And you know, so. But, and and I mean, the email from it was lengthy. Had a bunch of questions. Was his budget? It was just a whole bunch of questions well, that, on the budget. That's so, all right. I mean, yeah. So again, I don't. I never thought there was anything wrong with that when it happened. But you know, we as a board, we discussed it, and I think we clarified what the motion was. And I, if I still, I do agree. I maybe it needs to be clarified some more, right? I just like to. What's the best way out? And if you made it, tell me what the motion was, I was more or less looking for it. Okay. I think the motion is really another rendition of what's here. It, it was, and I, it was, I, I think what, the, <coughs> what I had just shared was it's the preference of the board, the chairman of the board of selectmen or his designee speaks to the press regarding the actions of the board of selectmen. So moved, Mr. How is chairman. that much different than what we already have? Because it's, it's, it clarifies it a little bit rather than, uh, it tightens it. So let's put it this way. The example would be, uh, I'll second it. So, All right. this guy, so to me, that clarifies says, when the board takes an action to do something, the chair of the zealot will respond to the press. But if if the press inquires about our position on something that hasn't been discussed by the board, all so three. Yeah. 
they want to know your opinion on it, or Frank's opinion on it, they can inquire. And you we can don't respond. have to give it to them, but right. I mean, it's up to you guys. So. You know, so I, like I said, the intent was to deal with it. I guess. So motion right. made and seconded. Does that make sense, Frank? Because I think ultimately we're. That's a, that's a position that people want. That's fine. It's a valid motion in front of the boys. Huh? Yep. Any any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Motion carries five zero zero. All right. <coughs> All right. Moving on to other items. Audit. Uh, audit has been uh, going on in the electronic <coughs> form for I think the past three weeks with uh, various requests of documents coming in to our finance people, mainly Karen, but others as well. I think they're going to be on site on Wednesday. There's very little on site time that they need now because most everything is electronic. Um, but if. Uh, is there a discount for that? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> no, no, there's, there's not because. <laughs> um, did they. Uh, did you, I know that we were asked about the, um, the process review. Yeah. And I know Frank and I chimed in. Yep. And I think it's a point. I think anything, everything was open because we've yep. already done most of the stuff. What did you, what was decided to go forward on? Library. Okay. Um, because they have not been through the cycle. And again, this is this is a very niche looking at cash handling only. Yeah. It's sort of an intensive. I didn't realize the library took cash. To be honest. Yeah, it's an intensive that. look at that. So they've they've done selectman's office, solid waste, police, you know, and then our cash handling goes way down after that so in terms of uh, the amount that comes through um, clerk actually so my, my sense is next year you're probably going to be due again for clerk and selectman's office because we handle the most cash receipts through those two spaces so yeah we did the selectman's office and the clerks in 2011 right I think it was 11 yeah so, yeah. so you know, I mean it's not to say they don't look at anything else anyway but you know they're, they're the same sort of intensive look at that you know and the processes that we've well, they look at all the rec reconciliation sheets. They look at everything. Here, so, so. Right. Um, Any... second point I want to bring up um, a couple things uh, in Concord recently. Uh, shortly after our last meeting, um, with the help of Senator Susi and uh, can I stop for the, is there any other question about the audit though? No, before sorry. You, you, you jump topics before I was finished. Oh, we were done. No, I just want, I want to make sure everybody else is done. No, no the audit's all fine. Yeah. Sorry, Jason. I just would like to introduce the next item before you jump. To it. Go ahead. I know. Go ahead. Okay. So um, we've uh, uh, after the last meeting uh, here, uh, we had <coughs> Representative Byron and Senator Susi uh, with an amendment to a uh, Senate bill that Senator Susi had sponsored about timing of recounts. Uh, and one of the things that we tried to take out of the situation we had here was clarifying in state law what the notification for recounts of a ballot question are. You may recall that the issue that we faced was that there is nothing actually written in state law on it. And um, so uh, some language has been proposed. It's working its way through the system, um, you know, ultimately for our clarification, our recommended clarification to go forward. Uh, committee has to approve it, has to go, and it has to approve the amendment, add it to the bill, then the, that bill has to get go to the House, be recommended for auto pass, go back and forth, go back to the Senate, because now the language has changed. So there's a long and winding road ahead of it. Uh, but I think we gave them uh, some good information, and it was helpful to have both senator and representative speaking to it. Um, and then one of the other headaches we've been wrestling with for the past several months is a um, retirement reporting. Um, a bill came through last year um, designed to head off, you know, the, the, the work of New Hampshire retirement part-time workers has been a constant challenge. It's, it's uh, something we rely on here, but there are constant efforts to try to ratchet that number downwards. So as a result of a compromise last year, um, that number wasn't reduced, but 
tracking was introduced. Um, and um, it, unlike the recount case, uh, law, in this case, since it didn't specifically exclude nonsensical um, tracking, uh, New Hampshire retirement is having all retiree tracking. So if you are a legislator, a selectman, uh, any other official in addition to, if you're, if you're any public official, paid, unpaid, stipend, hourly, your municipal employer has to report your hours each week or each month. How do you track a selectman's hours? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, we're doing the best job we can. Luckily, you know, uh, it's we're doing the best we can. Um, and so uh, Frank has been working on, on uh, some legislation to hopefully correct that to deal with those places where we're genuinely concerned, people who we pay hourly. Um, and so... How does that look, Frank? Does you think you'll be able to... I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with the... Uh, Actually, it wasn't one on one. I had both the New Hampshire Municipal Association um, lobbyists as well as a representative from the New Hampshire Retirement System meet with myself with Senator Carson, who is the chairwoman of the Senate um, Executive Department's administration, which hears the House bill. Um, unfortunately, the committee chairman of the House, which is my committee chairman, did not allow me to make an amendment to it because I won't get into the details, but incorrectly would not allow me to make an amendment to it. So I said, okay, fine. And I went to the Senate chairman of the same department. And she was more than willing to allow me to make an amendment to that. So I presented to the Senate committee an amendment, much to the surprise of the House committee chairwoman, who didn't know I was making the amendment. But although I had told her that I was doing that, but that's fine. And they're going to incorporate that into the bill. So it should go through. The problem's going to be now, if it comes back to the House, is whether they have to go to a committee of conference or not. So we'll see what happens. If it goes to a committee of conference, I have a feeling that I will not be one of the House members sitting there. I was going to say to you, I, what's your chances of being on that? Probably slim and none. For doing the right thing. That's the thing that gets me about yeah, other things. Yeah, I know. And in fact, the um, I think it has a good chance of going through because I don't think the house is going to want to waste its time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's good. Anything else, Jason? Uh, that's that's all I have. I'm happy to answer any questions that the board may have about anything else I put under the informational items list. Does the board have any other questions for a town administrator? Yeah, real quick, I wanted to ask about the fire department for explore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It already went? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. The question that I have is that they've been using the town vehicle mm -hmm. building department? Yep. How many miles do I have on it? Uh, 30, 30 or 40? 30 or 40. It's yeah, I don't think it's anywhere near. I don't think it's 40 yet. What's that, about six years old? I don't think it's that old. Um, yeah, it's it's it a, it's yeah, I think it is. Hold on. Roland had it, yeah. 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 What? The, the car that Kevin cool. drives around. Yeah. Oh, the one they got rid of? No, not that was a 1991. No, no. That's the fire department. We're talking about the one Kevin, <laughs> we're talking was, about Kevin drives now. Right. I think that's a 2005. I want to say. Oh, the one Kevin. Oh. Yeah. I want right. to say it's 2005. But. Yeah, it's at least. The uh, chief points out that he sees that that may not be a good permanent solution no but it's working for now it, yep so um, we're gonna need to think of this next year yes uh, I mean the, the replacement of the Explorer the fire department Explorer was subject to this year's budget but we obviously couldn't find the money to do it well I guess the question that I'm saying is that is it if it's an ex it's like a I don't want to say an extra vehicle what's an extra vehicle for, for the fire department they use it mostly for transfers and to training. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Transfers yeah. to training and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe is it better to buy a code enforcement new vehicle or is it better to buy a fire department new vehicle? That's just something that we're going to have to right. think about. Right. But, right. And, you know, we had 
started having a conversation around, you know, when we look at all the vehicles in the capital plan, uh, and, you know, one of the suggestions that we looked at was uh, a different vehicle that would be more appropriate for code enforcement. What would that be? Uh, no, a small pickup truck. <laughs> I've taken a lot of backlash for that one. <laughs> um, a small pickup truck would like probably a be more whatever. appropriate. S10s um, that said, the Explorer is inadequate, but not exactly the best fit for the fire department either. So we'll, you know, um, expect that when we look at the capital needs, we'll look at um, what no, makes sense it. across all the vehicles there. I know I saw it on the preliminary spreadsheet you have been putting together. So yeah, it, and you know, and we're trying to look and see. You know, it may not be it may not be like for like. Just because one vehicle type has been in service, it doesn't mean that that's what we're going to recommend. All right. So the reason why I said that is because you basically nailed the head right there by saying put Kevin in a small pickup or something like that. Mm -hmm. But we can also point out how many times that Explorer has been used by other departments going to training, going to meetings, going off-site. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that needs to be kept in mind as well. Because if that gets turned over to the fire department and this again happens, we can't then turn over a pickup truck because that won't meet the needs. Right. Yeah. So we'll just have to look at the whole thing because small pickup trucks aren't necessarily cheaper. No, but I think the issue was what it, well, yeah, yeah, agreed. Yeah, it, it was more utility and function on this end. But, you know, it's a fair point of, you know, if you don't have, if if you have two of su of something in rotation, it's always better than having one in rotation. Right. Good point. All right, anything else for the town administrator? Nope. Right, what, move. what did they end up getting for that? Um, it's not for auction, right? I don't, it's, it, it, it's at auction. It'll be auction next month. So oh, we're John's probably not much. It's we're there. expecting it's less than a thousand bucks. Yeah, yeah, sub thousand. Get that. No, I, just because we're talking about it, it's the only reason I ask. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. I just, I mean, I know it's up at the building. I know we're not going to score no ten thousand bucks or nothing. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. Selectman report. Does anybody have anything they want to share? Any supplement reports? No. I no sir. I have. Uh, I missed a conservation meeting, so I was I was ill, unfortunately. But um, I did have one quick update. I did send an email to all the chairs of all the committees regarding the, just reminding them that May first was the deadline to go to start broadcasting and recording the meetings. Um, I got back one or two questions, but other than that, I didn't hear anything else. So I assume to come. I assume that they're making the, uh, you know, my email reminded them to reach out to the uh, to Dick and his staff to get the scheduling of the operator and all that stuff. So I'm assuming they'll start working that out. We'll measure that. I also also the opportunity to remind them that they have a uh, state statute requirement to, to file their minutes at the town clerk's office. And I um, suggested that they all take a look at what they have out there and make sure it's up to date. So I was going to go look later on in the week and see if there's anything changed. I'll make sure to pass that on to Rec if yep. they don't already know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I know Sandy knows, but they they need to help. Okay. Um, I think that's all I had. Oh, Frank, you budget committee. I know you went to the first meeting last month. Just a quick comment. I watched the meeting. I don't know why, but I did. Um, there were some comments that were made about the process the board of selectmen used to present the budget. And there was a comment which really was about not having department heads there. And <clears throat> I just wanted to let you know for your own information that the department heads have always been there. Um, some, there's been one or two department heads who have chosen not to because there's nothing technically in the budget. For example, the zoning board doesn't come because it's just a numbers game. But we have always had the department heads to be there to speak to the technical aspects of, of the budget. In case in point would be a road project that Jack would be doing, he would come and speak to that. Um, if we, you know, the police, the police, the police chief was there during his budget cycle to talk about cars and different things he was asking for in the budget. So they're always there to answer the technical aspect of it. So the comment about them not being available to them, um, I just, it, it was inac it was, it was not accurate. <coughs> Who made the comment? Did I make that comment? No, 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 not you, not you at all. I just, because my comment to them was, I was frustrated from a perspective of the budget committee's process, which is to have the department heads there for one week, not ask any questions, 
And then what happens is the second week, when the department head is usually not there, right, then, then they go vote. dump a whole boatload of questions, yeah. which would have been more appropriate to ask to the department head. Yeah. Right. And that was the issue that uh, both the school representative and myself had. Yeah, and it's a fair, having been part of the process for two years, um, the pri I know that it's even it's more complicated on the school side because some of their budget is so right. complicated, um, or there's subject matters that we don't you know don't understand it. But the town side's a little bit more cut and dry. There's you know usually I think a big talk topics always spend something around the cars and the process and policy. And you're right. What happens is an influx of questions come in and we respond back and we you know if we think there's going to be a need for the department to be there again, we'll ask them to be there again. Um, but you know again, the um, the process, I mean, as you saw, we, we've condensed our process, we've done. I, the other thing was the two-third vote to reopen the budget lines. Yeah, I don't think that's going to... That, to me, just was confusing. It sounded like they said, I don't care if the bud, if the Board of Selectmen reduces the line even further, we're not going to open the budgets again. And I think that's just not... I understand it's frustrating when we come December 31st and we say we're going to reopen all these lines because either we've pulled money in from... You know, we've recovered some dollars so we can reduce out of the next year's budget, or we've gotten better numbers, or we finally got a better number for health care, health care, or whatever the reasons are, I think they're missing an opportunity, but... Well, if they don't want to, then we don't have to revisit. So. Yeah, I know. So. Well, the only thing that I think was discussed, which I do, do think makes some sense, is to establish a calendar date where we would be able to provide back with those feedbacks, I'll call them, into the budget are going to be so that they don't have to open it up multiple times if that's, you know. Um, I could see that point because well, they're in, they are under a the time The challenge the was is it wasn't the multiple times. At the end of the year, they only they didn't open all the, we didn't open a lot of line items multiple times. It was the one cycle we went off and modified every line. Yeah, we shouldn't have done that. Well, well, we kind of had to because it was health care. We had open a line for, for health care and personnel. Yeah, but you do that once. It's usually one... But we had open One every. Time. We had open up every account. You know, I, what I thought was the most well, fascinating. You shouldn't have had to do that. that. The budget committee wanted the default budget so they could formulate yeah. their thinking on the budget. That scared me only because it sounded like the, what they're trying to do is. It's I mean, not their budget. The default is the. I know that. Board of Select. It sounds like that. it sounded like what they wanted. I mean, I don't. You know, the, the, there could be a practice here too. They say, "Here's our default budget, and we're looking at a three percent increase over default." But. You know, that's also, there may be outliers too. It's a little tough. And I think that's, that's what it feels like they may want to do is that here's our metric, here's the bottom line, and then we'll only approve X amount of dollars above it, whether or not we present a very yeah, sound no, But that's well, not budget. the way to budget. No, that's I'm not, not saying it is. I, I, asked, I, just, I did ask the question as to why does the budget committee need the default budget to put together their budget? Correct. And so, and they couldn't really answer that. The right. other, no, they should not the other, get that. Uh, they prepare their budget, and that's what goes to the floor. The other comment that was about revenues, they actually have the revenues. They always have had the revenues. They never really looked at them. Well, when, when I was on the budget committee last time, they took a vote, and Jason, I think, was there not to look at the numbers. Yeah, but what I'm saying is the revenues and, and have always been... That's why I've always soft-pedaled the schedule of them. Our, our revenue approval has always been part of the portal. They, they look at the same spreadsheet and the yeah, same outlines. They, it's always been there. And I, I had a, I wanted to go back and pull the minutes, but I actually thought I actually gave them, handed out, I handed out the revenues last year, and they said, nice, okay, thank you, but we didn't vote on it, because it's nothing to vote on right. it. Um, but I didn't go back that far, because... Well, it doesn't, it doesn't tie matter. to expenses, so yeah. it doesn't but, matter. But the only thing is, I think what we ought to do is, you know, going forward is establish a date that we're going to say, here's what we know about the 2000, in this case, 2014 budget. Here's what the budget committee's already approved, sure. and here's what we're going to transfer over from, from uh, say, 14 to 15, and just that or that would be it type thing. But we don't know that until the end of December to begin with. It, it is. I mean, well, that's a challenge. But if we could do it in early December, I mean, I think that that should be more than sufficient time for the budget committee to address any line items. Yeah. And I, if they don't want to do it, then that's fine. That, then the money automatically drops to the general fund. Well, I, I thought it was the practice of this board not to do encumbrances to the last meeting of the month. Well, we, we, have it, we have an indicator, but you wait to the end of the year because you don't know what's going to happen in December to the end of the year. So you, so you can't finish off those numbers, I mean, until 
early January. See, we, I know, but was, the problem is if we wait until January, then we start to get close to the, yeah. the budget hearing and everything well, else, and it, it starts to get really funky. It, I, I think just a, a general thought is instead, you know, one of the things that we should schedule ourselves a little bit of time early, you know, I would, I'd say like maybe one of our June meetings to really take a hard look at what we want to do this year, budget process overall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had two default budgets in a row. So the message to me is continuing to do what we're keeping on doing is probably <coughs> not the best idea. Yes. And, you know, what different perspective do we need? Where, where then do we change what we do? Where do we engage the budget committee in a, in a constructive conversation about revisioning their process? Because, you know, I mean, the blunt comment is it's their budget that's been defeated two years in a row. Uh, it, yeah. It's our budget. It's easy to say it's, that. But it's our budget, but you know, technically, it's there. So how can we work with them to help be, help their process be more productive? I get their frustration. Um, you know, I look at it having worked in different formats. Some of their frustration to me is frustration of their own making. Uh, it's a procedural frustration, and you know, those places where all of us can have, you know a better conversation about the numbers in the community and less conversation about getting bogged down in process, the better we'll be. Well, I said this before, so I'll say it again, because I said it outside of the meeting, so I'll say it inside of the meeting. We should invite the budget committee in to a meeting and have an open discussion with them. Ask them what they would like to see us do. And we can then make a decision if that's the way we want to go. If we want to try to get on the same page so that we can present the same budget so we can get everyone in this town behind us, let's try to find the middle ground that we can both agree on. But I think that's a great idea, but our rep usually would be able to bring that back to us from, from the meetings. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I actually don't, I actually think it's not a bad idea, obviously. I think that I just when we start our budget when we start our budget process when we do the, we do our first workshop in August whatever it is we start why well, don't invite them into it and have a discuss have that as an opportunity for them to come in and discuss it with and I thought we tried that and they didn't they said they didn't want to I, I well, agree I with remember, Steve but I I, I, I kind of wanted thought that we did try to do that one year and they declined it's a different year I, yeah I, no I know I'm just I'm trying to think why there, we didn't do that there's still some level of uh, at least I perceive there's a level of uh, the desire not to be on the on the or to participate yeah. on the capital. Uh, yeah, I, I did hear that. And whether, they, I, whether that comes to pass or not, we'll find out when they well, and it appoint says, or don't appoint somebody. Yeah. I, I think if you if, if you go based on what they've been doing, they they pretty much denied. They they have not appointed anybody to to. to I think there's one that I think Cindy may be on. That's sort of gray area, but. Um, but I agree. I mean, we've got two years that, that the budget has failed and. We can sit there and try to figure out why, and I don't think we really understand 100% why it fails. The problem is, is that we come back and we present a budget to keep the town operating the way it is and to maintain all the issues that we have. And in the two years, we've had the $200,000, $250,000 increase related to the hydrants, which was a vote of the people. So we're not operating at $4.8 million anymore. We're operating at $200,000 to $300,000 higher at our base. So. But also, you know, when there's comments of, you know, year, last first year was a $15,000 difference between the two, and it still failed. That's not the case. It was seventy or $85,000 difference. This year is $130,000 difference. And, you know, you see, we've got $74,000 that we're deferring to next year that they have to get back in the budget somehow to deal with the current operating levels we are. And we had a citizen come up and talk about, well, we shut the fire department down on the weekends. I'm not sure what else we can do. We have to look at areas that are less impact than other areas. And... I think we're doing all the right things. At least I hope we're doing all the right things. And the feedback has been we're doing the right things, but I don't think we're hearing enough feedback. Let's put it that way. Enough different opinions. I think we need to hear more. Yeah, and I guess I'm, I'm just going to ask you know that, that we do take a hard look at what 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 we do because more of the same <laughs> is not working. Uh, you know, I used to have a professor who would say when the horse is dead, it's time to dismount. The horse well, has been dead for two years. I I think it's really hard to present a budget. When you have two different sides going up there saying different things, different things. I mean, if I'm a voter sitting in in the audience with no idea about what's going on, or I'm watching it on television, 
I'm going to say, if these people are people I vote in to do this for me and they can't agree, I'll go cheat. Well, the, the thing is, is there's... I don't want to say that that's what they should do, but I, I think that that happens sometimes. And it's not <coughs> for any other reason than if the people they elect can't agree, why should they want to agree? So let me ask you a question. How do you, how, how do you believe people are perceiving agreement? So when, I don't Article, see- two, when Article 2 had the, the approval of both the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen, that's us agreeing. All it takes is those voices that are different than the rest to cause question. Sure. But if we can cool. try to bridge that gap a little bit closer, maybe it takes concessions on our part as well. But some of, the, some of those opinions that, that you hear, the, the, the dissenters, and I'm not saying it's not a, a larger sector than the ones we hear publicly, but you know, some of them may you know, want to go back to you know, no, I shouldn't say that because it's going to come around, but they would like to see services reduced. That's fine. Maybe we need to listen to that. Right, but so here we go. We redu- there's only two. Lo- there's only so many knobs we have to turn in town. We we had one person come forward and say we think about closing the fire department on the weekends. When many the the primary duties of those, those folks are there is yeah station coverage, but it's station duties, right? So it's cleaning and getting things ready. Versus, do I let go of a police officer? That's another. That's a huge knob. If I let go of a police officer, I, I have to save myself a hundred thousand dollars. Plus, but that's not what people want. At least that's not what I think people want. I think the same Trust feedback me. come back. Trust me, you and I are more on the same page than you may think we are no, right now. Mm-hmm. But where we differ right now is that I would really like to sit down and listen to what they have to say. Because maybe it will change my thinking. Maybe it won't. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I, But maybe that's what it's going to take to hit more common ground. Yeah. No, and I, agree. I, I certainly agree with the, the discussion of the budget committee. The only challenge is because one thing is they present the tax impact. We present the operating with regards to how we run the town, and so it's it's two different approaches. We come here with a, a you know a sound budget to operate the town at a level and maintain the assets we have and the people that we have and try to be fair. That always signifies an increase. They're looking at the impact of the system, which is their duty, and it's also ours too. But not hearing from anybody say, "Okay, I don't want to. I can't afford it anymore." So I need, I need you to make some hard decisions, which I think is something they said, you know, because default two times in a row kind of says that. But well, where do we make these hard decisions? But, but, but hang on a second. Right. It's not up to us to make the hard decisions. It's up to the budget committee. It is a budget committee's budget. It is the budget committee's responsibility to present that budget, and it's the budget committee's responsibility to defend and publicly bring to the attention of the voters their budget. We end up having to live with it. We can agree with it or disagree with it. And that's our option. But we're also put we're also put here to make some hard decisions to maintain the town at a level of town. And if the voters decide that the budget committee budget is the one they wish to go with, or the default budget is the one we go with, then the board of selectmen have to deal with that and, and change the budget or change which the is line what we, which is what we've done. Which is what we've done. So I you know, I am not of the opinion I mean I think that while it's great that the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen could be in some agreement, I think it's great that we present our views and everything else, I also say that it's up to the Budget Committee to make those decisions. If they feel that $5.5 million <coughs> is the right number, that's up to the Budget Committee. If they feel that $5 million or four point eight is the right number, that's their decision. And we will have to do what we think is the best thing for the town accordingly. So, so, so- with what you just said there, so then what's the point of us five sitting here going through the budgets? Well, well no, no, that's a discussion time. that I was hoping to get into sometime, say June, July. <laughs> All right, yeah. save it okay. for then. Well, I'm I just, think, the, but the problem is, we're also put here to no, run. We, we we're running the business of the town. We are closer to what it takes to run this town than the budget committee is. The I budget committee, and I don't, no one take offense to it. They swoop in come budget season. They focus on what we're trying to tell them. And what we're saying we need, they disagree with us, but they're not sitting on the seat trying to deliver the service. And I think that's where the, the back and forth comes in. Well, uh, Mr. Chairman, the, Frank is absolutely right. It is not our budget. But what we do have to do statutorily is present the budget committee our budget. I agree. Mm-hmm. And so it, we, 
we would not be doing due diligence if we did not go over these budgets with our department heads and present to the budget committee what we feel is the best document, the best recommendation to uh, our rec best recommendation is to the needs of the town. At, from that point, as Frank says, it is the budget committee item. What they present to the town is their decision. If we have any strong disagreements, it's in our best interest to talk to the budget committee about it. And hopefully we can, <coughs> if we can change their mind. So uh, we have done that in, in times past. So but we do need to work on budgets. So the interesting thing that happened last year, or this, this past budget season was, we went through every line, every account, and they most accounts passed seven blah blah, right? There was a few that were a little bit, you know, was on the edge. But for the most part, they swung, they understood what we wanted, they agreed with it. But then when it came down to approving the bottom line, they, they went, to, they, went made, they made a motion to withdraw $80,000 out of it. <clears throat> and, and that, you know, their, their, opi their, their, their opinion was, or the reason, the justification was, yeah, we agree <coughs> with everything you're trying to do, but the big number's too big. And, you know, my response was, well, then go back to the lines you think are inappropriate and withdraw. Right. And I could, you know, taking a large chunk of change out of the bottom line and, and then having us go back and making priorities, although that's going to be our job if we get to the fall, it, it just seemed wrong if we went through it. But, but that's, not the, that's not the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen. If they wanted to cut $80,000, then they should identify where those cuts come from. Right. Exactly. I, 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 I argued against doing it to the bottom line. I said, go back to the lines you don't feel are appropriate. I can remember years ago, that's exactly what the school district told us when, they, when the budget wouldn't Right. And Some of the, our members here. on the budget committee wanted to take a bottom line cut, and they said, <coughs> "Oh no, you tell us where you want to, please." Yeah. See, and, 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 I, and I guess I'm going to give you a slightly different point of view. In that, I sometimes wonder we're so focused on line items that we can't see the forest for the trees. Yeah. <coughs> and we get mired in the how much gas is in the tank and all of those kinds of questions because we're doing our due okay. diligence on every single line in that well, we're budget. We're trying to save $500 out of us, uh, right. $80,000 line. But then ultimately, ultimately, the thing that we're concerned about is the, okay, you know, <coughs> here's a number, where do we end up with it? What have we done the past two years? The voters have given us a number. Your town administrator and department heads have put their heads together <laughs> over a week or two to readjust to live within that number. They bring you back a potted set of review. You look at that say, I can agree with that, I can agree with that, I don't like that, and we move on. So we have compressed the allocation of the numbers that the voters give, have given us into a very short period of time following <coughs> hours and hours and hours of multiple boards and committees looking at lines. So yeah, we did, somewhere we, there's a difference here. But no, we do that because we're so educated in the budget as it is. We know where those impacts are. So when we take this default and plug it back in, we know the result of that default. We already because we already had anticipated we were going to. The fact so that makes, you do you do know it. I mean, and that that is part of it is that yes, the end period is compressed, but some of it's shorthand because we've had this these discussions right, before. Right. And and I would also I mean the other, the other side of it, and I believe this. I think it's a good healthy discussion, but. You know, the default budget, we tinker with it. And I say it the wrong way, but we tinker with it, right? We tinker, every, every town does. But we tinker with it, which gives us a result of the default budget being significantly less. You have to do that. <coughs> I, I agree. But if we use the math formula and just do the math, it would maybe be a different result. I mean, it's a, I'm 100% on board of when I only need 10 pencils, I'm only going to put 10 pencils in the default. But it can hurt us in other areas. And so... I. I don't know, you know. I know a town whose default budget was almost a hundred thousand dollars higher this year than, than the regular budget. Well, but and I don't know what I don't know what our default budget would have been if we did not do those, mm. the, the, the 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 editing out of it. My guess it would have been closer to what the operating budget was, but I'm not saying it's not. A pra I'm not saying it's not a good practice. I'm just saying it's a it's a, it's a debate, right? Right. Um, my last, my, time last, my last comment on this subject is basically I did not agree with 20-something questions on the ballot, okay? But you look back 
the vast majority of them passed. Yeah. Apparently, we need to have 40. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because it, you'll find that's where the money passed, okay? Yeah. So that's going to be my closing comment on this is that maybe that's the way we have to start to think. Well, the problem, and I think the only challenge is, and, and, and again, maybe this is my opinion, but a lot of other items we could pull out of the budget that are significant enough to go into a warrant, potentially, are normal maintenance of our assets. So if you're, at, if you're suggesting that we put the cruisers or a fire truck every, well, it's cruisers, cruisers, cruisers every year out into warrant, now, then why are we even here at this I think, point? I think we're at a point with our cruisers well, you right can't now because that we have to budget our cruisers the way we need them. But I don't think that we're out of the realm to go and ask them for another one. No, I threw a warrant. In addition. Yeah. But the problem is with the no means no, you've got to be very careful with what you're well, asking. That's cruiser, what we pay lawyers. But if a cruiser flips over and wrecks in total, it can be replaced. No, no, no. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah, end yeah. result. No, I'm no, stuck no. on oh, yeah, I'm so. saying if you put it in the budget. And then you ask for another one through warrant. Even if the budget's defeated, you get the warrant. Sure. So you say we can make the difference. I, I, I hear you. Sure. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. what I've had people say is, wait a minute. You're trying to pull a fast one because you're yeah. asking for double. Because if you don't get it here, you get it here. And if they, they don't like me, that. And if they ask me that question, I'm going to say, no, what I'm asking for is to make up for what we haven't had and yeah. what we've needed for the years to come. It, it, We're asking you what we need in the budget, and if you don't want to give us the extra, vote no. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting. I, I've obviously sitting, in the, sitting at the polls all day, I certainly heard two sides, right? Too much. Oh, my God, many. I heard a lot of people say too, too many, many warrants. Yeah. Holy and, and I think if, we, if you look at the recount, there was a certain amount of blanks. Well, yeah. People, and again, yeah. do they just have no opinion or they just thought? Oh, they were mad. Some people were mad. It was by a vast majority. Yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. the longest mail I've ever had to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. They were complainers. Too and many I, I, and I know I, in watching the budget committee meeting, <coughs> obviously there was yeah. comments about that too, you know, more warrants because yeah, that was a message. And I, maybe that's the case. That's a, maybe that's the approach we take next year. Everything goes to warrant. But I think we need to be careful of that too. I, you know, we'll have to figure that out. Mr. the chair. I need to. Yeah. I've got a time. Any more, anything else on this topic? No. Any other second reports? No. There was no items moved from consent and there was no other business. So I'll take a motion to adjourn. Move to oh. adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? All right. No, no second. One second. Mr. Garrett, did you want to speak again? Please. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank you for the non-second, uh, Jason Lindbergh Court. I, I, I want to congratulate Mr. Perry. I think he, he touched on something that I think is very, very important in our town, and that's... Just, just Mr. Perry? Well, no, there, I'm talking about a specific point that he made, um, in that listening really, really helps. Um, when two sides, there's, I see a very, like you said, there's two very different opinions in our town, and the only way to solve that is to bring both sides together and, and agree to some point. No one will ever agree to everything, but I, I think there are some galvanized sides that with a little bit of effort can be made closer, and then you have people that are, I'll say myself, more willing to come out in public and say, no, that's a good deal, right? But when it's so far apart and nobody's, it, whether it's a perception or not, perception is reality to folks, when the perception is there's no opportunity to participate, the answer is always no. And so it galvanizes people. And I think, Steve, just by listening, you're, you're exactly right. People then can sit, feel part of the process instead of outside of the process. Um, and, and I understand that it may not be exactly that way in y'all's mind. But, again, I hear from a subset of people that absolutely believe that. Now, I know it's not that extreme, right, because most of us all know each other and we talk a lot. But appearances, you know, and it's proven at the ballot. Um, secondly, I, 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 the default budget's my favorite topic ever. And it's not a thing to be manip manipulated. Um, and it's, it, it, the issue is maybe we shouldn't take some of the reductions in it, is how I heard that come off. Well, the, the default budget, the language says that. It's increases and decreases. It's a, not a one or the other thing. It's not a straight line appropriation. The language in the RSA says increases 
and decreases you're supposed to take. If there's an increase in, in salaries, you have to take it. If there's a decrease because you use less of it, you have to take it. What it is is no one's there to challenge it. There's no authority in the state of New Hampshire to actually validate a default budget. So people make it what they want it to be because no one's challenged it. You know, and so once it's challenged, then there'll be some better guidelines or whatnot. So uh, I would hope that I never have to challenge it myself, but I certainly would if it was egregious, you know. So it, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe there's some, some, some things later on in the future. But um, again, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion made to adjourn. Seconded. Aye. All in favor say aye. Aye. All right, we are adjourned. Um, no. no. Oh, sorry. Close, uh, Our next meeting will be April 28th uh, at 6 o'clock here at Town Hall. Everybody have a good evening. Enjoy the, re enjoy the nice spring weather.